is one of the largest in U.S. history, but far from the record. Buxton chose to take a lump sum payment of $242 million before taxes. I'm Ed Donahue. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. For over eight years, Gary Lightman has been the chief executive officer and guiding force behind tech company Media Merge Incorporated. Lightman spoke to reporters this week about working his way up from his humble beginnings as a son of the previous CEO. If you would have told me 10 years ago that I would someday be the CEO of my dad's company, I would have said, absolutely not. I mean, it feels like just yesterday that I started off as a senior executive at this company and now, I'm in charge of the place. Lightman told reporters that he credits his continued success in business to a number of crucial moments in his career, including getting hired by his father, his father's retirement, and a few lucky breaks in between. I'm not gonna lie to you, it was a lot of work. I was here for nearly eight hours every day. Someone clearly saw my efforts and took notice. You know, a lot of young people ask for my advice, and I always say the same thing. Work hard, and it will lead to bigger and better things. That's what I tell my kids. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want. Just dial in toll free here at 855 450 free. That's 855 855- Four five zero three seven three three. We've got Skype. You can Skype on into the show. Username is lrn.fm. You do need to send a contact request first, and you'll be approved. So don't worry about it. Just send the contact request to lrn.fm. We'll get you on the list, and it'll be easy for you to connect on Skype. Toll-free number again is 855-450-FREE. Lots to talk about. Interesting news stories out there. It's going to be hard to pick which one to start with. Uh, but coming up tonight, an update on the alleged Silk Road founder, Ross Ulbricht. We had given you the latest on his case prior to this uh, This new news, uh, was that apparently he had not been indicted on the alleged murder-for-hire charges, as the feds were plastering him with. They were painting him as this uh, murder, you know, this murderer, somebody who was hiring hitmen to take out his competition. And this is really important because uh, Russ, Russ, Ross uh, was... Ross is a libertarian sort. So he claimed. And that is... Well, so, well, hold on. Dread Pirate Roberts claimed to be a libertarian, and so did Ross Ulbricht. Right. Okay, so both of these yeah. characters um, in this story apparently claim to be libertarians, and, a li- and libertarians would not have a problem with a person, from a philosophical standpoint, opening up a drug bazaar. As a matter of fact, they would support it because an online drug bazaar, because what it would do is it would increase competition and therefore drive down prices and create a safer environment for people that use drugs. It would be a harm reduction strategy, and mm-hmm. um, a libertarian would support that. However, a libertarian would be very queasy about supporting a person who um, had been involved in a murder for hire situation. So maybe they found with uh, Bradley Manning that they didn't want to have a hero because that hero is going to get all kinds of money thrown at him. So what they wanted to do was, uh, and this is what they do with everybody they arrest and put in jail. They starve you out so you take a plea bargain. They don't want to actually have a take to have to take a case to trial. So they starve you out in hopes that you uh, you make a plea bargain. And if you don't have any money to fight, then you know that's a strategy. It's a conspiracy theory. I'm assigning this, but it's certainly a plausible story. Story. By the yeah. way, Brett is here with us from the School Sucks Project. You can check out schoolsucksproject.com and uh, enjoy his program. But how familiar are you with the uh, Ross Ulbricht situation? Uh, only from what I've heard on the show and mm-hmm. obviously because of what uh, Silk Road is. When I first heard about this story months ago, I was a little suspicious. I'm a conspiracy theorist. I don't think there's there's any shame in that. Should I we? think everybody is. Yeah. Um, I think that, yeah. that well the that conspiracy gonna... here was to paint Ross Ulbricht as a murderer. Uh, sure. That's yeah, exactly. Conspiracy. Exactly. And uh so let me give you the update here from Angel Clark actually. She hosts uh, the Angel Clark show. She's done the digging and she's looked at the uh the the government the motion here by Ross Ulbricht's lawyer Joshua Dreidel 
which, by the way, if you want to help the uh, the Ulbricks out, we'll give you some information on how to do that here in a moment. But the attorney for alleged Silk Road fo- uh, founder Ross Ulbricht is asking that the money laundering charge against Ross Ulbricht be dismissed, arguing that the black market website operated in Bitcoin ruled a non-currency in a recent decision by a U.S. government agency. I think he's talking about the IRS ruling that claims that Bitcoin is property and not currency. The motion submitted by Joshua Dreidel was made public on Tuesday by Wired Magazine. The document shows Dreidel was quick to react to the new definition given to Bitcoin only a week ago by the IRS, which explained that virtual money is treated as property and is not treated as currency. The money laundering indictment requires a financial transaction to be carried out with the involvement of either funds or monetary instruments, argues Dreidel, adding that Bitcoin appears to be neither. Thus, says the argument, quote, an essential element of Code 1956, a financial transaction, is absent because, ne- because a necessary component thereof, either funds or monetary instruments, is lacking. Consequently, it is respectfully submitted that Count 4 must be dismissed. Now, I think what we'll find is that this motion will be denied. Not that I'm an expert or anything like that, but I do know from experience with courts and I've had quite a bit of experience with courts, is that they'll just go ahead and pick whatever they want to pick. They'll be able to look at, you know, the prosecution might make the counter-argument, well, FinCEN, this other federal agency, says it is currency, so therefore all the money laundering laws apply. So yeah. even though the IRS says that that Bitcoin is property, not currency, they'll make an argument that the reverse is true because, well, FinCEN said it is currency, and there's also some federal judge somewhere, I think, who also ruled that a Bitcoin is currency. Mm. And then the court will pick whatever is most favorable, likely, to the state. Yeah. Although, it's an interesting approach. It's worth filing the motion. So uh, as we hear more, we'll let you know what the result of this is. Just generally speaking, obviously, uh, we understand and we've seen examples of this again and again, that the court is very much a weapon uh, that can be used against people, especially uh, dissidents. So, uh, you know, I know you guys have fielded a lot of calls over the years where people call in and describe the uh, quote unquote justice system Mm -hmm. sort of uh, like it's, uh, you know, you're on a game show in a foreign country and you just have to (laughs) be able to yeah know the passwords and the, you know, the little tricks to get by. But right as soon as you think you know something. As soon as you think you know how to go about doing something in court and you actually try it, yeah. you find out that you were either wrong the you were either wrong right up front or it'll work once and then the next time they won't let you get away with it. Yeah. This so, happened to you, right? I, I've had this uh this happen. It happened to Johnny Ray, our Tuesday night co host. He has this approach where he will uh they're supposed to send you the, the court rules are they're supposed to send you a witness list yeah. two weeks in advance of the trial. I think it's two weeks, either two weeks or one. But anyway, there's a certain set amount of days. They have to send you, if they're going to call witnesses against you, they have to tell you who they are and they have to tell you before the certain date. So what his strategy has been, and it has worked once or twice, was he's gone in, they've sworn in the first witness. So as soon as the witness gets sworn in, objection. This, you know, I did not receive proper notice of this witness. Mm-hmm. Case dismissed. Or, you know, motion wow. to dismiss. And I've I've seen his cases get dismissed, one or two cases. But then he's tried it a third time, and it didn't work. And I've seen somebody else try it as well, and it didn't work because the judge will will make an excuse or they'll say, well, you know, next time you state prosecutor, you should know better. Naughty boy or naughty girl and kind of give yeah. the give the state agent a lecture in court as though that, you know, is good enough to make the rules, apli- you know, make the rules not applicable. Yeah, forget it. Now we, we've, we've chastened them now. Well, right. And also another way they've come up to get uh, come up with to get out of it is to po- uh, just postpone the trial. Oh, what's that? You're saying you didn't get the witness list within the two week window. No problem. We'll just put the trial off for another month. Prosecutor, make sure you get him his witness list this time. So I've seen that happen. And of course, we also know that in New Hampshire, and it's probably true in every other court, they have rule number one of the district courts is that the judge can waive the rules at any time in the interest of justice. So there are no rules. Yeah. I mean, just straight up, right from rule number one, you know all of this is arbitrary. Whatever the rules say will only be applied to you as it is in the state's best interest. Now, is that really close to the language the judge can waive the rules. I can it, pull. I can pull it up here. But yeah, that's wow. basically I'm, says I'm that. paraphrasing. But yes, in judges the interest have of no justice, rules. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. so it's like a disorderly conduct charge inside the court, right? Where the law is what 
a man says it is. That's always what it is. Yeah, exactly. That's always exactly. what it comes down no to. No such thing as a rule of law. It's a joke they played on conservatives. <laughs> right. Right. It really is. I mean, I it's agree. just it's it's a bunch of horse crap that we've been told our whole lives. I mean, I was really down with this. The idea is it's very simple and it's easy. You write the rules down, you make everybody follow the rules. But it's obvious to everyone involved that the government doesn't have to follow the rules. If the government had to follow the rules, the whole system would fall apart. So everybody who's not them has to follow the rules and then they do whatever the hell they want. That's not the rule of law. That's absolute law. Lawlessness. So, yeah. so here's the actual legal terminology. Okay. This, is, this is rule 1.1. This is the first rule of the New Hampshire District Court system. As good cause appears and as justice may require, the court may waive the application of any rule except where precluded by law. Except so where precluded maybe by Maybe there are a few rules in the system where they can't rule it, like they can't overrule it or something like that. But sure. Generally, every but you rule... you won't know what the law is. Right. You would have had to have read everything to know what's precluded. Yeah. Right. But generally, every rule in the system can be waived. And, wow. You know, in the interest of justice. And the man in the robe decides what that is. 855-450 freeze the toll-free number here tonight. We'll continue with the latest on Ross Ulbricht, the, uh, the alleged man behind the Silk Road. Whether he is or not is another question. We'll come back with more, and you can share your thoughts at 855-453 on Free Talk Live. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country, with a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers. How can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book. And it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's, it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage wanna... and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, look, and the I Social Security Administration of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare, and, of course... OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business, but Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves right here. Toll-free number 855-450-FREE. That's the Pro-XPN toll-free line. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. We've got a webcam. You can go watch and listen and interact as well. The chat room is built in right there to the same page as the cam. Go to cam.freetalklive.com. And now, compatible with mobile devices. It had not been previously. Uh, this week, basically, was the first week that you were able to or you are able to browse to cam.freetalklive.com on your preferred mobile device, whether iPhone, iPad, Android-based, not sure about Windows or BlackBerry, but if you've got a Windows or BlackBerry-based device, feel free to email me at ian at freetalklive.com and let me know if the mobile feed works. Of course, if it doesn't work, there's probably nothing I can do about it at this point. But uh, it's working now, at least on Android and I, I, uh, iOS devices. So you can go to cam.freetalklive.com, hopefully from just about any device, and you can watch the webcam for free. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Plus, again, the chat room's built right into the same page. You can interact with other Free Talk Live listeners. Plus, by the way, we've been talking about Ross Ulbricht. I'm going to finish that story, and we'll get to your calls about what you want. Update on the man accused of being Dread Pirate Roberts, the operator of the Silk Road underground black marketplace. As you may recall, Ulbricht was arrested in October of 2013. This is from noarmycanstopanidea.com. Angel Clark, that's one of her websites. Ulbricht arrested in October of last year and indicted in February. So it literally took them about half a year uh, to, right to a speedy trial. go ahead and indict this guy. Prosecution alleges he was operating Silk Road, clandestine website that allowed its users to buy and sell drugs and other illegal goods and services anonymously. I'd like to point out there are legal, uh, legal goods available on the Silk Road and the other underground sites. Uh, but the sites uh, could only be accessed through Tor's anonymizing service, and the deals were made using a Bitcoin-based payment system, which also enabled users to conceal their identities. His attorney, Joshua Dreidel, described the charges as unconstitutionally vague as applied to Ulbricht and compared the alleged Silk Road founder to a landlord renting out his property. He says in the motion that he filed to dismiss the money laundering charge, again, his argument for those of you just tuning in, the argument is that it's not money laundering because the IRS doesn't consider it a currency. Yet, he says, that does not describe a co-conspirator in the controlled substances transactions because a landlord in this instance, with Silk Road acting as the digital landlord for its tenants, they, the alleged drug dealers, unlawful vendors, and other users of the Silk Road website, is not a co-conspirator of and or liable for the criminal conduct of his tenants under Section 846, regardless of whether the landlord possesses knowledge that the premises are being used for illegal purposes. Although, as an aside, there are certainly some governments who have argued that if a landlord is aware that a house is being used as a drug house, that they become liable for that and could be subject to forfeiture. Didn't the Silk Road take, um, you know, basically escrow money? They did escrow money, yes. So there was, I mean, there's there's a little more participation than a landlord renting out a, um, you know, a, a, a house that gets used as a crack house. I mean, they did escrow the money for legal and illegal sales, whatever the sales might be. They blindly escrowed the money. They didn't, they, you know, probably weren't paying attention to who was selling what where. 
Um, they didn't care, right? Like, they just didn't care. Well, there were certain items that if they were brought to their attention, they would have been prevented That's from true. selling. So, Some. Uh, the, the weapons, for instance, weren't allowed on Silk Road. Child pornography. There are a few different categories of things. The poisons, I don't think, were allowed poisons, on Silk huh? Road. Huh. Um, yeah, poisons are interesting because if you if you read old literature, people are getting poisoned all the time, but you yeah. don't hear about that much anymore. People aren't uh, offing each other with poison any longer. Well, not ordinary people. So that's uh, <laughs> that's the latest, by the way. Silk Road had been operating for a couple of years before it was closed in October of 2013. Prosecutors argue that among services available there were drug sales, document forgery, and computer hacking. And they, most again, of the document forgery had to do with government, uh, you know. Documents, though well, you're yeah. talking about passports, and those are the only ones that the government really cares about. Yeah, they don't care if you go out and forge, uh, you know, an ASE certification right, or right. something like that. They only care if you forge something that they come up with, like their license or their passport, etc. So that's the latest on the Ulbricht case. His attorney arguing to have the charge dropped regarding money laundering, so he would still be facing. Uh, drug dealing charges or conspiracy to distribute narcotic substances. And then I believe there's a computer hacking charge, and I'm not sure what that is in reference to exactly. But when I was reading another update on the case recently, I noticed that the story about the indictment, the recent indictment that happened, one, one of the things that didn't make clear, make clear was that, you know, was this indictment replacing the original indictment? Because he was indicted right up front with the initial uh, filing against him by the FBI, as I understood it. So it seems like these new charges have replaced whatever it was that was there, because the lawyer is only arguing to re- to remove one money laundering charge. You'd think they'd have thrown uh, a thousand money laundering charges at him. I mean, if he's got all these you know different transactions coming in that he's assisting with or whatever that his system is is working out that is helping people do business illegal business you'd think they would have come up with more charges rather than just one but no it appears that there's only one money laundering charge here there's only one uh, from my understanding if i'm wrong yep. please correct me on this there's only one conspiracy to distribute narcotics another thing they don't address is in the first uh, you know story they said that he's essentially dread pirate roberts but there had been a situation um in, on silk road where the claim was that dread pirate roberts was gone and there was a new dread pirate roberts which of course sticks with the whole princess bride storyline which i find to be well, very amusing well that was an interview we read of dread pirate roberts through forbes magazine yep. where Whoever was the current Dread Pirate Roberts at the time of the site being taken down had claimed he was actually, in point of fact, the second one. It could be. Yeah. What evidence did they have to tie Ross Ulbricht to it? They claimed they found him with his laptop open. He was sitting in, in on his website, logged in as Dread Pirate Roberts. Interesting. That's a pretty. That's pretty damning. If in fact that's what happened. Yeah. But at this point, I don't know what I believe and what I don't well, right. believe. They also claimed he was hiring people for murder. But they that's didn't what indict I want. Him. Right? Like you, you look. Listen, FBI. You owe me as an American citizen. I've paid your stinking paychecks for two decades now. You people bring an indictment against a murderer, or you don't. You are crappy at this work. All you've managed to do is go, you, you. You find a killer, and all you can do is get him for for computer hacking. You stick at this. Go back to cop school and figure out how to do your job. If they're listening right now, the FBI, <laughs> they're like, this man is adorable. <laughs> Prepare the poison. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you want to help out Ross Ulbricht, he needs some help. He uh, does not have access to his bitcoins. His parents are not rich. So uh, please, you can go to freeross.org. That's freeross.org. There are contribution options there, including Bitcoin, of course. Also, PayPal. And I think you can cut them a check as well. So go there. You can get updates, information about the case. FreeRoss.org. And we will continue uh, We'll continue to give you updates as well as we learn more about this. It's, I, you know, this is really – this is going to be an interesting case to watch because it's important, first of all, as far as the black market is concerned, as far as Tor, anonymity, Bitcoin. So this is a big, big case for all those aspects. And, of course, it's also important to Ross, who is currently sitting in a federal prison in uh, in a holding cell, basically, awaiting... Maybe he's in population by now. But he's in a cage, awaiting his chance to maybe be free again. So if you want to help cover those legal costs, freeross.org. We'll continue here in moments. Your calls and thoughts on the way about whatever's on your mind. Plus, we'll pick up the list of 30 things to stop doing to yourself that we kind of just barely started last week. Yep. More on the way here, 855-450 free. Take control of Free Talk Live. Self-reliance. 
survival supplies, survival skills, national experts. Get it all at the only free-to-attend national event exclusively for preppers. This spring in Tulsa, it's the National Preppers and Survivalist Expo, a must-be-there event. Presented by American Living, this massive expo will include special guests, David Mays from Nat Geo's Doomsday Preppers, plus GCN Zone Dr. Joel Wallach via live video conference. Hear Dr. Bones, Nurse Amy, and members of the American Prepper Network, along with many other leading national experts. Learn life-saving tips, CPR, how to handle crisis situations, walk through a bomb shelter, and much, much more. Two big days, April 5th and 6th at the Tulsa Expo Square in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's April 5th and 6th. Doors open at 9 a.m. with absolutely free admission. Don't miss the National Preppers and Survivalist Expo, America's largest emergency preparedness event. Get your free tickets now. NPSExpo.com. That's NPSExpo.com. May I have your attention, please? If you are trying to lose weight, we need your help. We're AF Plus, and we have too much product and too few participants in our nationwide risk-free trial. If you need to lose 30 pounds or more and would like to participate, call now. 1-800-967-9495. AF Plus is an amazing, proven breakthrough in weight loss. A once-daily capsule that can help you lose weight in days. It's also one of the healthiest ways to lose weight because each capsule contains natural ingredients, including green tea extract. You'll boost your metabolic heart rate, allowing you to shed pounds in days with just one capsule a day. Be among the first to call for your risk-free trial. Again, we have too many risk-free trials and too few participants. If you would like to lose 30 pounds or more by taking just one all-natural capsule a day, call now to participate in this nationwide risk-free trial. 1-800-967-9495. That number again is 1-800-967-9495. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big-time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MindThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MindThings.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855 450 3733 and join us online over at freetalklive.com. There are all kinds of features on our website and they are free, unlike those other big shot talk show hosts who want to charge you for five, six, seven, eight bucks a month or something like that. You can just go to freetalklive.com. We got the webcam, we got the archives. We now have the video archives in the format of YouTube. 
So not only can you download years worth of audio archives, now for about the last month or so, we have been doing video archives every single night. You can go to youtube.freetalklive.com to grab those. And of course, right there at the front page of freetalklive.com are our audio archives as they have always been. So go to freetalklive.com and click download and enjoy. And please feel free to share. If you've got a favorite show of the week, some sort of moment that you enjoyed, then just copy that URL and drop it in your favorite social bookmarking website. SoundCloud is awesome, too. If, it uh, makes it easy to share stuff. Be, yeah. And it also makes it easy, considering that the show is two hours, to pin stuff. You know, using the uh, the waveform, you can just go in and say, this was funny. Oh, this man, is really I wish great. more people would do that. Yeah, I, I, I think that's like one of the greatest features about SoundCloud. I always thought that was one of the coolest things. What you're talking about is you can actually leave comments mm -hmm. in the audio. So like normally with uh, with You can audio write form. comments on the audio waveform. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, normally with sound that somebody you know puts on a uh, Facebook page or puts on a, a WordPress page, you can add a comment to the bottom of the page sure. just kind of generically about the sound. But on the SoundCloud actual player, what you're saying is if you're on their site, you can actually click on the, the display of the waveform at a certain point. So whatever you're, you're listening at five minutes in, you want to leave a, a comment about what we're talking about at five minutes in, you can actually do that with SoundCloud. I mean, we don't explain and that And other very people often. see it, right? Yeah, and everybody else who looks at the track can see, oh, somebody commented about this par portion of yeah. the show. I wish it would be plugged all over it, but uh, you know, sometimes when it's like... Well, if we had 400,000 downloads an episode, then we'd have more comments in uh, We'd be in littered, episodes. yeah. yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have I want 400,000 downloads an episode, yes. Yeah, we, we don't even have uh, a fraction of that but uh, so the more if we did a comedy have, show and talked about boobs and poop we would be good to go yeah that's a great name by the way boobs and poop yeah the podcast yeah <laughs> <laughs> you can have it if you want wow oh <laughs> thank you we'll see we'll see so uh, but but yeah the more listens we have on soundcloud the more likely someone is going to leave uh, a message but feel free to try that and, and leave a leave a comment there if you like and actually um another speaking of leaving comments for free talk live itunes if you are somebody who listens to Free Talk Live via iTunes, which is probably one of the more popular ways to listen on, to us online as far as the podcast, uh, there is a ratings system with iTunes. And if you haven't left a rating and a comment about and for Free Talk Live, then please take a moment right now, if you're listening to the podcast, go ahead and hit pause and, uh, and then go to your iTunes if you're in front of your computer. Go to your iTunes and leave a comment and a rating for Free Talk Live because that, in theory, could help us get exposure to other people. That's mm -hmm. the idea. At least. It's true. It absolutely. I, I think it absolutely will do that. And you know, something else you want to consider is Pro XPN Virtual Private Network. Your online data encrypted back and forth, meaning that your internet service provider can no longer snoop on what you're doing online. They're doing that right now. They're probably logging every website you visit. Every search term you enter for up to five years, you can stop that tonight by going to proxpn.com slash FTL. Download the ProXPN software. It's available Windows, Mac, iOS devices, Android. So whether it's your smartphone, your laptop, or your desktop computer, uh, you can get ProXPN. So again, proxpn.com slash FTL. When you're ready to sign up for their premium account, because you can start with the free account, but when you're ready for their premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth. You get to select your server around the world where you want to connect to. And uh, you also uh, you have the ability with Pro XPN to get around regional blocking or uh, like a workplace block. There's all kinds of neat things you can do with this. ProXPN.com/ftl. It breaks down to five bucks a month when you use our discount code FTL20 and buy the annual plan at ProXPN.com/ftl code FTL20. Let's go to the phones and to Brian. I believe in Albuquerque. Brian, you're on Skype. Hello there. Hi. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Excellent. Uh, I had a, a list of things I wanted to talk about. Uh, oh, my. One or two. Yeah. First, we're, I, I wanted to say We're on seven I'm, nights a week, Brian, so you can, uh, if you I don't know. get it ever in, you can call back. Here they come. Uh, I'm, I'm an amper, and I encourage Thanks. everybody to do that. Uh, Thank you. I went to Liberty Forum, got to meet you guys, and it was a wonderful experience and brought my family. Oh, great. And now on to my real topic, uh, the protests uh, in Albuquerque. Um, I have a family associate who... Uh, who's one of the police officers uh, that was doing riot control. And um, one of the things that he said was uh, that he was dressed up in his riot gear with his gas mask and his baton and all of his equipment. 
And he said he stood there for like 12 or 15 hours and was just exhausted and that he's too old to be doing this. And it, it made me a little bit happy. Um, <laughs> What, what, and, what is it? You hope that all the officers are just be, are uncomfortable so that they are less likely to want to do this uh, behavior? Uh, mostly. And, and see, the idea, the, the analogy I thought of when he said that was uh, in, I, I, I'm not in the military, but in boot camp, my understanding is that if one of the, uh, one of the people makes a mistake, they all have to pay the price. And uh, since I don't, I don't think much police accountability really occurs, it kind of made me happy to see that uh, the entire group of them was being discomforted. Because um, in in that way, uh, they would one of them would make a mistake, and therefore they'd all have to pay. Or just uh, g- generally, that was some kind of feedback from the you know it's it's feedback they can't avoid. I'm just trying to figure out what, exactly what you're referring to here, Brian. Yeah, exactly. I don't think police accountability uh, occurs. Uh, they'll get paid administrative leave and then they'll be considered justified because they felt threatened and nothing will really happen other than maybe the taxpayers end up paying uh, for some settlement or something like that. And uh, it, it would be wonderful if the police that, that do make the mistakes end up paying some sort of price, but barring that as a possibility, because I don't think that happens, uh, it, it's nice that they all have some consequence to it, and that was standing out in in an uncomfortable situation for 12 or 15 hours. Varicose veins. Mm-hmm. If nothing else, we'll, we'll count on varicose veins. Sure. There's a darker aspect, too, to that de-individuation that you're talking about. And, uh, you know, because the police in this country are really being militarized, we, we can talk about it in the context of the military. Exactly, exactly what you mentioned, that everyone will be punished for the actions of one. And that's about people, you know, not viewing themselves any longer as a, a, an individual. I mean, by the time somebody's 18, they should be broken of that anyway after 15,000 hours of school. Uh, but where they do the same thing. If one student does something wrong, they'll go yeah. after the whole group. Um, I mean, it's it's amazing. It's it's basically a team mentality. It's team teacher against team students. Right. But what that what that develops is a kind of uh, a sense of anonymity, right? Like if you're part of a unit, if you're a band of brothers or whatever euphemism you want to attach to the stripping people of their individuality, then it's easier for you to behave without a conscience. Well, especially and, when you know your brother's going to back you up. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, somebody who did uh, a lot of great work on this subject was Philip Zimbardo, who ran the Stanford Prison Experiments. And he dressed the, if, if people are unfamiliar, this I think it was conducted in the early 70s, and yeah, it was a follow-up right. to his friend Stanley Milgram, who did these obedience experiments. But what Zimbardo was doing was trying to basically see how people would play into these authoritative roles. So he basically set up a mock prison. Some people were guards, some people were prisoners. And he very carefully created costumes for the guards, including mirrored sunglasses that are so you know attributable to police today uh, because you can't look you couldn't look them in the eyes you couldn't see that person's humanity you just saw your scared reflection coming back at you well in a lot of cases you won't even look at uh, because the eyes aren't there you'll find yourself looking around and stuff too yeah um, so I mean that it, it, it works from both sides not just the person who has the sunglasses on saying they can't see my eyes I can look at whatever parts of them I wish um, it's the the other one saying well I can't see their eyes what am I gonna look at now we can't even see police faces Brian uh, I have a feeling you had more to say stand by we'll bring you back here in moments 855 450 free that's 855 450 3733 and you can bring up whatever's on your mind here on free talk live Everybody wants to know, what can you buy with bitcoins? Isn't there like a Bitcoin general store or something? Well, yes, now there is, and it's at bitcoingeneralstore.com. BitBrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything, with free shipping. What can you find at bitcoingeneralstore.com? Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. They get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. 
Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. You gotta see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. Hey everyone, have you heard about the No No Hair Removal Device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional quality results, here's our favorite host, Cheryl, for No No Hair Removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my No No. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No No Hair has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors. So it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial. Get the No-No, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card. And you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible No-No hair completely risk-free. Call 1-800-953-6062. That's 800-953-6062. 800-953-6062. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on join the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves. Dial toll-free. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can go to freetalklive.com and enjoy all the features that we share there with you. If you uh, appreciate what we're doing on Free Talk Live, take a moment and shop with us at shop.freetalklive.com. You can enter Amazon through the links you'll find there. There's Amazon UK, Amazon Canada, and Amazon US. You just get your shopping done, get whatever it is you're going to buy. Because you're probably going to buy things online. There's a good chance you're going to shop at Amazon. You might as well start your shopping through our link so Free Talk Live gets a cut of what Amazon would normally take for themselves. They uh, will give it to us if you go through our link, and uh, I sure do appreciate it. It's very helpful for Free Talk Live when you do that. So please go to shop.freetalklive.com. Again, that's shop.freetalklive.com. Brian is on the line. He said he had a few important things to discuss. We can probably do one or two of those things. Brian, you did point out that you know somebody who's a cop. He's in the family. He's an older guy. And he was really frustrated by some of the protests that have been happening there in Albuquerque over police abuse that apparently is fairly uh, fairly constant from what, from what I was told by the guys from Cop Block Radio, which uh, is a new show on LRN.FM, airs 
10 o'clock at night Eastern time on Wednesday nights. They say they've been getting Albuquerque stories every single week. And uh, things are really bad out there. So people have been taken to the streets. There have been protests about police brutality. You say that a family member is a cop and he's frustrated by having to be out 12, 15 hours. He doesn't like all this work. He's thinking about calling it quits. Is that right? I don't know if he was thinking that seriously. It just uh, and he's a family associate. He's not really in our family, but um, the, it, it's just uh, yeah, it, it's been really constant lately. And I haven't been following it too closely, but I think there's been two or three more shootings since the uh, one that made so much publicity. Well, for every cop that feels frustrated and is ready to retire and doesn't want to stand around for 12 or 15 hours a day, there's probably some new kid who wants to come in and crack some heads. So I don't know if that's going to really necessarily, I don't know if you're suggesting this, but I don't think that the frustration that some of the older cops have is going to really amount to any change in how the police are behaving. No, I, I don't. I don't think it will either. I just thought it was a, a sort of a personal happiness to see them uncomfortable. Um, gotcha. Now I saw but, um, photography is not a crime. Uh, I think it's at photography is not a crime dot com. That's right. Um, they did a. There was a study apparently on uh, cameras for the uh, Redondo Beach, uh, California. Maybe it was mm-hmm. Rialto, California Police Department. They put on cameras the. Um, you know, there was an entire change in the amount of uh, abuse and and the complaints of abuse and uses of force in that police department. But that those same cameras were used in, I believe, Albuquerque. And he compared the two departments. And in Albuquerque, it made no difference at all. And his claim was is that that it had to do with training of the police department. That the uh, the police chief in Rialto wanted mm. to see their the, his department be an upstanding department that uh, serves the public and blah 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 you know all the crap that they tell you and the Albuquerque guy Albuquerque just don't ones give a is you know if if an officer's in if you if you feel threatened shoot him shoot him shoot him well i mean there's also a culture that develops oops oh, there's also a culture that develops when you have uh, a high population of basically voiceless people mm-hmm. so when you're talking about New Mexico Arizona i mean look at what Joe Arpaio has managed to get away sure, with he's in Maricopa a monster. County. Yeah. So when you have people who obviously don't know their rights, don't have money to go through the legal system, you're going to see uh, more police abuse for sure. I think that's true. Yeah. And the smaller the department, the easier it is to kind of keep tabs on these guys. Uh, and the more likely you're going to see the same cops over and over again, which is why I think we've got a real winning situation here in New Hampshire. The police departments here are very, very small. There's only right. 40 uniformed officers in Keene, New Hampshire. You know, it's not hard to know who all those guys are. Whereas if you're in a big city like Albuquerque, I don't know what the size of the department is, but I'm offhand going to guess it's probably over a 1,000. Uh, you probably have quite a few police officers there, and that means you're not seeing the same officers over and over again, and they're not seeing the same people over and over again. And so it's easier for them to dismiss you and not care about you and not pay any attention to rights or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, it also gives them what I was talking about last segment with the military. It gives them anonymity. And mm, we, exactly. we even see that uh, even though they don't need anonymity uh, that way, they also uh, are having more anonymity through their riot gear, where now they look mm-hmm. like an invading robot army. You know, you can't see any faces uh, most of the time. So, yeah. According, I think that's- to, according to Wikipedia, Albuquerque has 1,100 sworn plus 460 unsworn officers. I don't know if an unsworn is like, uh, I guess that would be the people who are the, the office staff. Yeah. Those kinds of people. So, yeah, over a, over a thousand officers there in the streets. Brian, uh, what else did you want to share with us tonight? Um, that's mostly it. I, I wanted to say that the, the police officer that I overheard, he was saying that uh, he, he thought it was the protesters' fault that he was there. And I, I didn't get a chance to correct him on that and mm. explain to him the logic behind it but also i wanted well, to say i mean that, uh, if well, the the fact is is that uh, he's going to have to do a lot of soul searching to come to the conclusion that you're right um i mean it's basically teams and the protesters are out there because police officers 
the people with whom he works every day, the 1,100 people who, you know, the, the sworn officers that are standing between uh, b- between anarchy and the people of uh, Albuquerque. He's protecting these people, and they have no, um, no respect for the work that he does. I mean, otherwise, he's going to have to come to the conclusion that, oh, my God, I work with a bunch of people that are so cowardly that they're going to shoot a, 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 a half-naked homeless guy um, in the mm. claim that he might have been going for a knife and when he's 20 feet away from them. Right. And, and the, the, main per, the, the main important thing is that the perception of the public gets involved in this, too. And that's another place I wanted to compliment you guys on the peaceful nature of everything that you're doing. So Thanks, Brian, for that, your I'm call done. tonight, man. Appreciate hearing from you. Let's go to Steve in Los Angeles. You're on Free Talk Live. Steve. Hey, how are you? Hey, good, Steve. You're on the air. Good. Um, I had a question for you. I uh, had listened, you know, I listened to your uh, show semi-regularly. I listen on podcasts usually. Thanks. And, um, yeah, of course. And uh, there was uh, a time where I heard a lot uh, about uh, uh, Brad Jardis, Bradley Jardis, Mm -hmm. who was a former law enforcement officer. And um, I've only listened sporadically the last couple of months, but I haven't heard any mention of Brad Jardis. And uh, Brad Jardis, and I was curious to know if you guys um, know what he's up to now. He was sort of an inspirational figure to me. So having not known anything about uh, what he's been up to lately, I'm a little curious. Yeah, okay. Well, it's interesting that you asked that this week because I just saw Brad for the first time on Saturday night for about the first time in a year. And oh, wow. Uh, yeah. So going to make a long story short and just tell you that sure. Brad's been having some personal difficulties uh, he's had to step away from the public light as a result of that. And uh, that's really all I feel comfortable with revealing about his personal situation. But he seemed no, to be, yep, he seemed to be doing well. I was ha- very happy to see him. He just happened to randomly stop by. He was picking something up from uh, from next door. and he seemed to be okay. I told him we needed to catch up. I don't know when that'll actually end up happening, but uh, I, I love Brad. He's a great guy. Uh, he's been and, and he's been a motivational factor for a lot of people, I think. And for our listeners that don't know, Brad Jardis is a former law enforcement officer. He was in law enforcement for over a decade here in New Hampshire. He found his conscience. He, uh, you know, realized that what he was doing in a lot of cases was not helping people, like by enforcing the war on drugs and things like that. So he came out. He spoke out against the war on drugs. He joined law enforcement against prohibition, and a lot of pressure came down on Brad from uh, within the department. As a result of that, they attempted to get him fired. He was subject to sort of inter office. Not just politics, but just badgering, people making fun of him, drawing pictures of him with, you know, like gay Brad or something like that. They were writing things on his car on the back windshield and some threats, too. Yeah, some threats. I mean, the cops suggested the cop. One of the cops wore a shirt, I think, to his hearing. What was it? Something about rats and like dead rats. Uh, Like he had some sort of dead rat related shirt. I think the suggestion was that Brad was a rat somehow and they were going to do something to him. But anyway, that's my, pretty threatening from yeah. a guy who uh, comes around, uh, you know, goes around all day with a gun on his hip and is supposed to be enforcing the law. And maybe, you know, as uh, one of his coworkers, he's not so great at that. Yeah. So um, he's getting help right. for his situation. And, and that's one of the reasons why he's out of uh, the limelight, so to speak. Does that answer your question a little bit? It does. I, I would just like to add that, um, you know, if anybody communicates with them, maybe let him know that he still has support, at least from, from me and probably, I'm sure, from other people that value liberty. And, uh, you know, if he does any future activism or starts any kind of pro-liberty uh, uh, enterprise, um, we'd be eager to support him, I'm sure. I'm sure that's true. And uh, if I do get a chance to speak with him again soon, I'll let him know. And Steve, thank you for your call and the concern. Uh, tonight. Appreciate hearing from you at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Hour number two is coming up. You can take control, share your story. Still to come, big marijuana decrim news on the way. Free Talk Live. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. 
Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. MeowBit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. MeowBit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of name coin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, MeowBit. Go to MeowBit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T.com. Do you love coffee as much as I love coffee? Here's a delicious way to drink the best of the best coffee and make a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Comano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox Coffee. And you can try a pound for free. All you do is cover shipping. It's organic, shade-grown, top 1% Arabica grade. 10% of future purchases help our efforts to give the gift of human freedom through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Kane in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, April 2nd, 2014. Silver is trading at $20.10 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,292 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $493. Antiwar.com reports the Polish government is really using the Russian annexation of Crimea as a chance to lay out a laundry list of demands for massive increases in NATO military aid, hitting out at the slow pace of the buildup so far. It seems slow because Poland's ambitions for a NATO force are so grand, with Foreign Minister Radek Sikorski pushing for a permanent deployment that includes a minimum of 10,000 ground troops. Sikorski complained that Poland has been a NATO member for 15 years and all they've gotten was a single conference center out of the deal, insisting he wanted a prominent major presence. Prime Minister Donald Tusk added that NATO membership came with the promise of military protection and expressed annoyance at the lack of ground troops pouring into his country over the threat perceived by his government, but which no one seriously thinks is going to end with Russia invading Poland. When you purchase gold or silver from Amagi Metals using my affiliate link, gold.fppradio.com, you help fund FPP Radio News. That's gold.fppradio.com. Raw Story reports food truck regulations that went into effect on January 1st of this year are preventing churches in Birmingham, Alabama from feeding the homeless. Minister Rick Wood of the Lord's House of Prayer told ABC 3340 that police informed him he would not be able to provide food for the homeless in Lynn Park unless he owned a food truck and possessed a permit from the health department. Wood said, that makes me so mad. These people are hungry. They're starving. They need help, but they can't afford to buy something from a food truck. Wood attempted to argue with the officers, claiming that the regulation only applied to trucks from which food is sold, but was told that the ordinances apply to all food vehicles, even ones which sport a Bible verse on the side and give the food away. The new regulations were put in place to protect brick and mortar vendors from food trucks, which have significantly lower operating costs and have been accused of poaching customers from established locations. The entry bar for owning and operating a food truck in Birmingham is far higher now than it was in 2013, and organizations like the one run by Rick Wood are incapable of meeting it. Not that Wood will let that deter him. He says he will continue to provide food for the homeless in spite of the new regulations. I'm just so totally shocked that the city is turning their back on the homeless like this. 
adding, it's like they want to chase them out of the city and the homeless can't help the position they're in. They need help. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Opening a wallet is quick and easy, and for merchants, there are no transaction fees on the first million dollars worth of transactions. I trust Coinbase, you should too. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. Antiwar.com reports Bulgaria's attack party, the nationalist minority in a strongly divided parliament, promised to topple the government yesterday in the event they back a new round of EU sanctions against Russia. Though attack has long been portrayed as strongly pro-Russian and averse to the EU, the move isn't simply ideological. As Bulgaria gets an overwhelming amount of energy from Russia and a sanctions war could spell economic ruin for the nation. Bulgaria's ruling socialist coalition has been keen to back Western EU members on the push for sanctions, mostly hoping to curry favor with the EU's power brokers, but risk splitting its own electorate. As the former Communist Party, Bulgaria's ruling socialists also have strong historic ties to Russia and are facing calls to veto the sanctions, which any single EU member nation could do. The attack party chairman says he believes that a veto would do more for Bulgaria's EU standing than going along with the sanctions anyhow, saying he believes French and German officials would be silently thanking them for saving their own nation's billions of euros in lost trade. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Sources close to area man Michael Huesmer confirmed this week the unmotivated 29-year-old loser continues to waste his time living a contented life in his hometown near his closest friends and family members and has no intention of leaving. Former classmates told reporters the directionless bum has no ambition to leave his close-knit community for an expensive and stressful life in a big city and is apparently satisfied with remaining a pitiful nobody for the remainder of his unassuming existence. While most of us with dreams got ourselves dingy apartments and soul-crushing jobs in the city, years ago, Michael just stayed behind, happy to live his humdrum existence of regular contact with his parents in a town of people who express genuine appreciation for his presence. Honestly, it's pathetic. In the time it took you to watch this video, you could have read one of Shakespeare's sonnets, listened to an etude by Chopin, or taken in one of the masterworks from the golden age of Dutch painting. The Onion applauds your excellent taste. For more, keep checking theonion.com. This is the Onion News Network. Talk live. Take control of the airwaves. Toll free here at 855-450 free. That's 855-450-3733. We will pick up the list of 30 things to stop doing to yourself from lifebuzz.com. We got through two of them, I think, last week. Yeah. Uh, Brett and I, and you're welcome to, uh, to join us here in whatever discussion you might like to bring up. And you can join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. There's pretty big news in the world of cannabis decriminalization. This hit a couple days ago. And I don't think we got a real chance to talk about the kind of this news as it was coming. Now, District of Columbia Mayor Vincent Gray on Monday has signed a bill that decriminalizes possession of up to an ounce of marijuana in the U.S. Capitol. The law makes possession a civil violation with a penalty of 25 bucks. That's lower than most city parking tickets. Possession had been a misdemeanor, carrying up to six months in jail and a $1,000 fine. He did sign it this morning, said spokeswoman uh, Doxy McCoy. Gray is facing a tight race in the Democratic primary on Tuesday after being tarnished by Someone leaks to campaign finance scandal. Someone named their little girl Doxy? What's wrong with that? Like a dog, you mean? I need to look up what the word doxy means cuz I like I do- have a like a doxin doxum D O X I E Yeah, that's how it's spelled. Okay. You think it's slang for something? I think it's a slang for a uh, uh, a wanton woman. Oh. <laughs> All right, um, urban dictionary man. Doxy might know. with a, a Y rather than an IE is a fl- uh, definition, floozy prostitute mistress. Hmm. 
but maybe it was just named after the, that being uh, a wanton woman was named after somebody named Doxy, and before and after, it's still an acceptable I don't think it's new. Let's go ahead here. First known units, 1515. I'm thinking that this gal probably was named after the first use of the term Doxy. I... Your math looks good to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just seems like a really poor choice. Well, maybe somebody liked their doxy dogs. Their their, you know, dachshunds. Right? I, look, I have no problem. You can name them anything, but um, you know, I mean it's like a change her name choice. if she really didn't like it. She could. I don't know if that many I mean, I'd never heard of that before. No. Brett, I he's no. never heard of it. So, you know, maybe most people don't know that doxy is slang for a prostitute or, or easy, easy woman or something like that. Enough of them have to have said something to her though, right? How old is she? I don't know. Does not She's say. She's a spokeswoman. She's woman. just a spokes bureaucrat. Oh, okay. So anyway, this guy's going into a Bimbo, Democratic primary, so maybe he, maybe he did this because you know he wants to get votes. But regardless, he did it. Proponents had backed the marijuana measure as an issue of fairness. A study by the ACLU had shown that blacks in Washington were eight times more likely to be arrested for pot than people of other races. Decriminalizing possession of small amounts of cannabis in the District of Columbia is part of a nationwide trend to lessening penalties for cannabis uh, Colorado and Washington State, of course, as you know, legalized recreational marijuana use and voter initiatives in 2012. Now, here in our, our uh, New Hampshire, we're a little bit embarrassingly behind the times. Uh, it's it's embarrassing that New Hampshire isn't out in front on this issue. I don't we think it's get... unusual, though, Ian. I mean, you you lament this, and I lament it with you. Yes, yeah, However, for your die. the problem is New Hampshire has, uh, let's see, the Mercatus Center has done the ratings of the freest states in the union five times. New Hampshire has been number one uh, three of those five times mm-hmm. and has been in the top five every time. I'm not sure where they've ranked. Maybe it's the top three, but certainly I think it's, it's arguable to say that New Hampshire is the freest state in the union. One of the reasons is the citizen legislature that citizen legislature has a tendency to not uh, it, it's it's slow to pass laws so comparative yeah. if you say that our system is essentially difficult and arduous through which to get a law then it would be fair to say that it is difficult and arduous to get undone a law and this is it has its advantages and disadvantages yeah. now well, i mean there's no doubt new hampshire is probably the freest place to live but why but it's got some it's got some problems and this is one of them it is not a very live free or die mentality when it comes to the cannabis legislation. live free or die is something they wrote on the license plate the but fact, it means something to a lot of people in new hampshire what does it mean we don't have to wear seatbelts. Well, I mean, well for it means, some people that's what it means. It means something. It's it's a target of ridicule for a lot of people outside of New Hampshire. Not mm-hmm. saying that they're right. They're silly, like in Massachusetts and Connecticut. Uh, this was in a news story I read recently about uh, Adam Lanza's mother was a New Hampshire, and then it said in between uh, New and Hampshire, somebody added quotes, live free or die, uh, <laughs> to talk about her apparently liberal, liberal meaning free in this case, mm-hmm. uh, attitude towards guns. Uh, the, oh, she was from the live free or die right. state. Yes, that's people why he died. People. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, one question that I would have: Does the Mercatus Institute lean conservative? It's a they it's a, basically okay. a libertarian think tank. I mean, it's a um, certainly oftentimes these libertarian think tanks. Yeah, have but a you know, to... a lot of conservatives like to call themselves libertarians. So I think that the question sure. still stands. Mm, it's probably conservative leaning libertarian because that's how these things tend to be. People that use the term libertarian to describe themselves d- don't mean what you mean when you say libertarian necessarily, Ian. Usually they're referring to the small government minarchists or people that are working on particular issues. Most of those issues with which we. we we agree, but um, all I would say that you know what I have living here over the course of six or seven years um, have come to the conclusion that New Hampshire isn't necessarily uh, particularly a uh, state worried about civil rights and human freedom. That's what it I'm is saying. That's much what... more a state that essentially has a a, a complic- uh, you know, a difficult to use government. It has the really the only citizen legislature. There isn't another state that has 400 legislators, and our population is 1.4 million. We're the size of New Jersey and a, a fifth of the population, or something. I mean, it's it's a much smaller state. This state has a uh, you know, a difficult uh, a governmental system that makes it difficult to pass new laws, and that means it has a governmental system that is difficult to undo old laws. Mm-hmm. That's all it is, in my opinion. Sure, which is good. It- so, why did you ask that question? No, I was just thinking that you know maybe uh, you know a libertarian organization that leans conservative leans away 
from decrim as a priority. So that was my that was my only thought. Yeah, who knows okay. where that yeah. factored in uh, to their decisions. Right. But uh, yeah, it is a free place to live, and yeah, the government is uh, is hard to to control here in some ways. Meaning, like, or hard for people on the outside or lawyers to get involved with because they are they're opposed by regular people here, which is a good thing usually for freedom. Well, also you can't. Uh, I mean, uh, in just about every other state, an un- an unsuccessful attorney, an attorney who's sick and tired of, uh, you know helping clients can just go into politics and make mm-hmm. as much if not more money but not here because they pay the you know they're paid a hundred bucks a year yeah and, and it is certainly true that new hampshire did have a legalization measure passed the state house which made it the very first if i'm not mistaken the very first state legislature to ever pass a cannabis legalization measure Hmm. So that was kind of historic. Unfortunately, it died the second time it came in front of the state house uh, because apparently the some of the Democrats who voted for it the first time voted against it the second time. The allegation is that uh, somebody called in a favor, basically, that the governor who has pledged to not sign any legalization measures in New Hampshire didn't want this didn't put before. want her Democrats to come to put this before her. So she pulled whatever strings were necessary to make sure they those Democrats who voted for legalization previously voted against it uh, this time. Yeah, the whip so, the whip went out and whipped everybody into shape. So that's the theory. So the point is, we we still need more liberty activists here. Uh, if you love freedom and you want to have a chance at achieving liberty in your lifetime. Liberty activists are actually getting elected in New Hampshire. That's not happening anywhere else. They're getting elected as Democrats and Republicans here in, in you know, statewide. Uh, we're seeing people getting elected all over the place. It's really something that it's unprecedented in the liberty movement. You really owe it to yourself to learn more about the Free State Project. You can go to freestateproject.org. Learn more about it. Check out the 101 Reasons to Move to New Hampshire. It's a great document that is very, very persuasive and will give you all kinds of reasons why New Hampshire is the best place for freedom to blossom. It's the best place for us to plant those seeds for the future of liberty. And you can go to freestateproject.org, learn more about it there. The good news, by the way, for uh, people who support ending the war on drugs is the decrim bill is still in play here in New Hampshire. So the legalization bill is dead for this year. That can come back later. Two years. Decrim, still in play. And with news like this coming out of D.C., people like the governor are going to have less and less of an argument as to why they can't sign decrim and do the same thing, reduce the penalty from a misdemeanor up to an ounce to a violation, keep people out of jail cells, stop people from getting arrested. That's still possible this year. We're coming up. Everybody wants to know, what can you buy with bitcoins? Isn't there like a Bitcoin general store or something? Well, yes, now there is, and it's at bitcoingeneralstore.com. BitBrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything, with free shipping. What can you find at bitcoingeneralstore.com? Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. They get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. you got to see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. 
Last night's Victoria's Secret fashion show was a true ratings winner, particularly with men who don't know that actual pornography exists. The angels' feather costumes and silk nightgowns were a hit with 30 to 35 year old male viewers who had no idea that nude images of all the models are easily accessible on the internet. And the show did equally well with 10 to 12 and a half year old boys who are going to have their minds blown when they finally get around their parents' internet blockers. CBS executives are touting the broadcast as breakthrough programming for people who are excited by the tops of boobs. Producer Dave Mitchell told Variety, quote, the $2.5 million fantasy bra is a big draw with women who shop at Victoria's Secret and an even bigger draw with men who've never seen or heard about sex before. The runway show drew expected outrage from the Christian Family Research Council. Executive Director Kathy Rouse charged that the event degrades women by objectifying them, most likely because she's never seen a Ukrainian prostitute receive a bukkake shower from a gang of cracked out Albanian teens. This is the Onion News Network. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. MeowBit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. MeowBit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of name coin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, MeowBit. Go to MeowBit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, dial toll-free to 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. And join us online over at freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that we have waiting for you on the site. Uh, you can go and you can grab archives. We talked about the video archives. Also, want to mention to you, the Weekly Digest is moving. Uh, it is moving over to our main podcast feed. We had started the Digest out on its own SoundCloud channel. I don't know if it's going to continue there. Maybe it will. But, I don't know. Uh, but Benjamin Bartholomew, one of our listeners, he's the guy who's putting that together and has been doing a great job of it. He basically takes... He listens to the full 21 hours of Free Talk Live every week, and he determines... He listens what, to more than we do. He, de he determines Live. what the, the you know, his opinion, the, the you know best parts were, the most interesting or outrageous or whatever parts, the parts that he thinks are worth sharing, and uh, boils them down to basically an hour and 15 minute long program every week. So that's going to be available in our Free Talk Live main podcast feed, and actually within the next few days, he'll be kind of dumping them all down there. So if you've missed them, uh, if you weren't aware of how to get them before, they're all going to appear in your podcast feed over the about the next week. Can you make say. it so that somebody can just pod, just like they can do at Edgington Post, they can podcast the digest specifically? Yeah, we could do that. Okay. Yeah. Seems like something that's fair to do. We can work on that. Uh, just uh, remind me later because we're doing a radio show now. 855 450 <laughs> freeze the number. So, bitcoins are probably easier to use online than your credit card or your bank account or PayPal or any other form of payment, especially if you have the crypto kit plugin that I have. Uh, you can get that at CryptoKit.com, crypto with a K. But in the meat space world, oftentimes they're not quite as easy to use. Um, well, mybtc.cc is attempting to change all that. If you could just pull out a credit card that had bitcoins on it, had you know, was attached to a bitcoin wallet, swipe that at a terminal that was um, decentralized and non-banked, and it would immediately debit bitcoins from your bitcoin account it would be as easy to use arguably as easy to use as cash and i think that that's really the step forward for bitcoins that's the next big thing is when bitcoins can go from the easiest thing to use online which really they're definitely you know in my opinion they can definitely be that um, to the easiest thing or as easy as anything else to use in the meat space world then bitcoins win 
If you want Bitcoins to win, check out mybtc.cc. That's mybtc.cc. And check, it's an Indiegogo campaign, but uh, the guy who's running it, Temper, he's really excited about this. He's uh, basically got everything is already done. You're just signing up to either get a card or uh, be a, uh, a um, I guess, a, I don't know what that, do, do the transactions at your business, that kind of thing. Mybtc.cc. And... If this thing can take off, it's really going to change everything because somebody's going to put bitcoins on credit cards, but that somebody is likely to be a big bank or something, and mm. then the point of bitcoins tends to diminish. Do you want, um, you know, one of these bitcoin organizations that's dying for more regulation to do this, or do you want a decentralized system? Mybtc.cc. So the news out of D.C. is that the mayor there has signed marijuana decrim, going to make it so that people arrested for cannabis will only be able to receive a $25 civil violation as opposed to a misdemeanor charge and opposed to six months in jail, a $1,000 fine. So this is a pretty big-time decriminalization. This is major. I mean, this is to the point where the cops aren't going to bother. They're not even going to take the pot probably from you. Like, if you, if you get caught with pot on the streets of D.C., presuming this goes through, because apparently it has to go through Congress now. But uh, if, you get, true. if you get caught with marijuana in D.C., if this goes through... You know, uh, the cops are just gonna they're just gonna write you the ticket, and that's gonna be it. I would imagine a lot of them probably aren't gonna bother taking it unless they want to smoke it for themselves. Uh, they're not gonna be treating it as harshly, and it's the same thing that's happening. And I think Vermont did something similar. Ma uh, Massachusetts has a decriminalization Maine. law. Maine as well. And so New Hampshire is surrounded by states. Shame on New that's Hampshire. That's why I say it's embarrassing. It's yeah, shame on New Hampshire's uh, legislature for this. Not the most freedom-oriented states by any stretch of the imagination no. either. No. I've lived in all of them. Yes, and, they are bad. But I, I'm telling you why, though, Ian. Is the fact is is that it's you know New Hampshire's governmental system is difficult to get lost. Okay, to but you, what the also reason why is because it's full of a bunch of people who don't like the idea of cannabis decriminalization. We need to change those people's minds or change them out from the system. Agreed. If there were people in there who were compassionate towards their neighbors, then this wouldn't be an issue, and New Hampshire would have led the way in uh, in the Northeast. So, yeah, it's a difficult system and an unwieldy system, and there's some good things about that, but if there's a bunch of bad people in there, that's still a problem. And so the more people we can get Get here to, to be here as part of the Free State Project, the, the more success we're going to see on that front. Okay, but, so d is, is this a path? This might be somewhat controversial, but I'm interested in people's thoughts on this. Is this a path to full legalization? Like decrim, smoking? you mean? Yeah, well, yeah, and here's what I mean. Um, I remember stories, uh, you know, I was in college in Vermont in the mid 90s, mm -hmm. and fish would come, the Grateful Dead would come, and State troopers just didn't have the resources because everybody had pot. Sure. So it's like, all right, well, I guess you have pot too. Have a good day, you know, and they, they couldn't do anything where if there wasn't hundreds of thousands of fish and Grateful Dead uh, fans descending on the northern part of the state, they would have been able to deal with people one by one. That's right. So when decriminalization passes and there's not so much at stake for civil disobedience, what if 500 people, let's say, hypothetically, very hypothetically, especially in Washington, D.C., just go out every day and smoke pot? You know, uh, the reason especially if they don't pay the fine, like people in Massachusetts learned they didn't have to pay the fine and there was well, nothing that the Massachusetts uh, government could. But do they did that in Colorado um, when they uh, it's illegal to smoke outdoors in Colorado and Washington. Mm -hmm. But when when it became law, everybody ran outside and had a big old pot party. As they should. But the city or the park police, they don't have the resources to deal with everybody right. who does it. Just like my example in in Vermont. And it uh, reminds me of something, uh, I know I mentioned this on the show a few times before, I've been doing some shows with Thaddeus Russell, who wrote Renegade History of the United States, and his thing is, I mean, he thought he thought it was great when uh, Alt Expo smoked pot in the uh, hotel at uh, Liberty Forum, you know, and I didn't, I wasn't on board with that, but he said, hey, you know, the world changed. I'm pretty sure it was more than Alt Expo smoking inside I, the hotel. Yeah, okay. But, you know, he says the world changed not when people did a protest or not when people ran in, uh, for office. The world changed when people went outside and did what they wanted. 
you know? It yeah, didn't absolutely. care. Well, I mean, you, you know, you're here in Keene now, which yeah. is the home of the 420 celebration. Absolutely, that happened yeah. back in 2009. Uh, Rich Paul, of course, went to jail last year for the bulk of 2013 because he sold some cannabis and he wasn't willing to take a plea deal. He's now back. He's uh, he's out. He's back to activism, and he's plotting the next 420 event, which is going to be happening at the Concord State House on April 20th, as it has done for the last must be several years now, because I know I've been to a bunch of them. Is he on probation? And uh, he is on probation, as mm. a matter of fact. So it's going to happen. There's going to be a smoke out on the steps of the state capitol. Unfortunately, it would be on Sunday. So uh, if we can't get the media to come out, the state reps will probably never know it happened. Mm -hmm. But uh, nonetheless, uh, people will be out there and they will be engaging in civil disobedience. And it is currently a misdemeanor. So, yeah, if if it is decriminalized, I think more people would be willing to to uh, sort of flout the law and go out there. And uh, if, if all it is is a violation and a twenty five dollar ticket then more people will be far more likely to disobey. Yeah, yeah, public. absolutely. And I prefer, I'm sorry, I prefer decriminalization to legalization. If we can have full decriminalization, like taking it down to 25 bucks in a fine, that's pretty good compared to a misdemeanor. If we can take it down to zero, then there's no criminal penalty for it. And it's also not legalized, so the state isn't taxing it either. Mm. More coming up. You take control on Free Talk Live. For years, you've been hearing about Herbal Healer Academy and how it's remained the leader in effective, alternative, and natural medicine and education. But how can they continue to hold that title for years on end? The answer is high quality and huge selection. Just visit HerbalHealer.com and shop online or request a free catalog. You're bound to find the alternative you're looking for. Did you know that Herbal Healer carries the latest, safest, and effective weight loss products? You can also count on Herbal Healer for the largest selection of safe and natural supplements just for children. And don't forget your pets. Herbal Healer even has natural mineral supplements for all your animals, including horses, cows, and birds. Take a peek at their online calendar, and you're sure to find everything you need and maybe something you didn't realize you needed. Visit HerbalHealer.com and don't forget to sign up for the free Herbal Healer newsletter. HerbalHealer.com, working with the power of nature. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of FreedomsPhoenix.com get every day. FreedomsPhoenix.com constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy, health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative. 
freedomsphoenix.com. Constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways. With liberty and property under constant attack, freedomsphoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda, and it encourages the participation of its readers. Go to freedomsphoenix.com. That's freedoms with an S, phoenix.com. Freedomsphoenix.com. The revolution between the ears has already happened. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want. Just dial toll-free to 855-450-FREE. Will Washington, D.C. decriminalize cannabis? Well, so far, it's gone through the council, it's gone through the mayor, and it has passed a uh, fairly decent decrim measure, bringing down possession of up to an ounce to a $25 violation as opposed to a misdemeanor, which could get you six months in jail and a $1,000 fine. But it has to go through Congress in order to get Past. That seems like a real sticking point to me. And well, it makes me wonder. I mean, because the Congress people have ignored this issue uh, for years, it just doesn't come up. I mean, I don't know. When's the last time it ever got even voted on? No, I has agree. it ever? No, uh, never. It's I, not even. They don't even consider it a serious issue. So doesn't this? Now look, if you live in D.C. and you know how the system works there, I'd love to hear more because. The way D.C. government works is unlike anything else anywhere. I mean, there's this extra layer on top of the, the city government where everything has to go through Congress. Or does it have to? Can Congress just look at the, you know, do they get the uh, the declarations or the bills or whatever they are from the city, the ones that pass through the mayor's office? Do they get them in in Congress and do they go, hmm, oh, we don't really want to vote on this? And can they just throw it away? Or do they have to vote on everything? I would hope that they would have to vote, which would mean it would force their hand at the very least take the congressional temperature on this particular issue. It would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm guessing there's, it's probably not very common that they look at something and say, oh, this is none of our business. Oh, so, who would we be to interfere? It, yeah. When you say it's Congress, is it, does it have to pass through both houses? That is not made clear. Congress refers to generally both, the houses. both houses. Both houses. Yeah. Um, it do, it, the story says the measure will face a 60-day congressional review. So I don't know, uh, again... I have not done the research to know the intricacies of how the D.C. political system works. If you live in the area and you know I, more. I know this. It's full of liars and thieves. That much you can count on. Uh, but, you know, the 60-day review, does that mean that if they're reviewing the law and they do nothing, that it passes? Is it one of those like things? A pocket like pocket pass? Yeah. Like, uh, you know, unless they say no, it goes through. I mean, it's clearly the intention of the people running the government of dc yeah it's yeah. clear i mean the, the may it went to the mayor's office he signed it so is it one of those things where congress can interfere and stop it from being passed but otherwise it will go ahead and go through after 60 days i will do my best to find that out here our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE and if you know more feel free to inform us let's go to robert in vermont you're on free talk live roberts hi hey i wanted to ask Brett a question about uh it's, 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 you know, I don't have a problem with people that want to smoke marijuana. I, I, you know, I think it's a harmless thing, and 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 then you know, people who also use it for medical purposes. Sure. But uh, you know, heroin seems to make be making a real big uh, uh, scene around, especially up in here. If you saw the review in Rolling Stone magazine, you, you know, they call I ninety one heroin highway up here. Yeah. But uh, nevertheless, my question is. You know, somebody that uses the stuff, I mean, if they want to go ahead and they want to use it, that's fine. But when, they, when, when, it's when they're coming down, you know, and they don't have their next fix, and then, you know, pretty soon then they're breaking into people's houses or harming people. I mean, how do you help somebody like that? Oh, that's that's a great question. Um, I I will say this, and I know it's not a, I know it's not an answer to to your question directly, but um, I was surprised to learn because we all get propaganda, you know, when we're young, uh, related to drugs. And I never went really, I never went back and looked at it with certain drugs. I mean, marijuana was like, yeah, they were, you know, lying about that. 
But I always just thought like heroin and cocaine were really bad. And I don't think those drugs are good for anybody. And certainly we can see what the effects are of heroin on some people. But I just assumed, I mean, what I was taught is that everybody who ever shoots heroin into their veins is a heroin addict and they basically throw their lives away. And the only drugs where that's even remotely true, where people almost cannot use the drug without becoming an addict, are uh, crack and meth. And those are both creations of the drug war, essentially. So, I mean, I think there's this forbidden fruit aspect to certain drugs that are addictive. Uh, I think most people become alcoholics because... In America, we have this very puritanical culture where people are never introduced to alcohol in a responsible way. So usually they turn 18 and they go to college or they turn 21 and they've just never been given any tools for how to manage it. Well, certainly that's the case with heroin. So there's no education beyond that it's very, very, very bad. Well, also, when alcohol was illegal, people committed crimes surrounding alcohol. So the question get, yeah. might be, uh, it might be the case that heroin's, I mean, certainly the case is that heroin's price is inflated because it's illegal. Right. So therefore, if you made it, if it was, you know, decriminalized and it was no longer illegal, the price would come way down, maybe to, to like a tenth of what it is. And at that point, somebody could work a job and still be a heroin addict, and then you wouldn't have to worry about them robbing people any longer um that's a that's a possible scenario now one thing that's interesting robert is so far pot's uh, legal in colorado and washington but the price really hasn't come down on it no it it, it hasn't but but and i understand what you're saying Bray. i understand what you're saying as well mark but you know like what you said, uh, uh, Brett, that you know, that people haven't been taught how to responsibly use this. Yeah. And have got all of these irresponsible people that are out there that are all, they're deep right into this. They're all I what? Mean, Excuse not, me? They're doing what? They're, they're, all, they're all, they're all right, deep right into the use of heroin. I mean, again, you said that they hadn't been, you know, properly introduced to it. They probably learned from you know, maybe a friend or, or maybe their dealer how to get started using this stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I'll tell you like what most people do. Uh, the government uh, often tries to mandate treatment once somebody is arrested. They have a very reactive approach. But whether we're talking about alcohol, which is a legal, very addictive drug, or heroin or cocaine, um, you know, alcohol has Alcoholics Anonymous. That's not for everybody for sure. And uh, these other substances have these completely, uh, unless the government gets involved, completely voluntary organizations like NA, uh, Narcotics Anonymous. And, you know, that might be the best hope uh, society has to see people who have these problems get real help. But it starts with them making the decision that they need the help. That's true. And uh, in a legal or decriminalized environment, someone who decides to that they need help is more likely to seek the help because right now they may be afraid that if they turn themselves into a doctor or whatever, if they go and they seek help, that they might get snitched out to the police, that the police may, there might be some sort of mandate that the police be called. Even if there isn't a law like that, you know, a drug user can be paranoid in those ways. Sure. It happened to me. And I so had a... Uh, you were a heroin addict? No, 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 no. It was... The, not as severe, but okay. I had a bad experience with a hallucinogenic drug once. Mm. And I said, my goodness, I should go to the hospital because I'm dying. But then I was like, "You can't, and, and the people I was with, some who were under the influence of the same drug mm-hmm. and some who weren't said, "You, what are you going to do? You, you can't, can't go, go to, to the, the hospital, hospital and tell them that you did mushrooms. You'll go to jail. I mean, that's what we thought when we were 17, Even if it wasn't true, old. that's what people That believed. was the perception. It was and, very scary. And it turns out that this uh, fear that you had actually prevented you from wasting these poor people's time in the hospital. <laughs> Well, that's true, yeah, because I wasn't going to die. Hey, Robert, thanks for your call tonight. I do appreciate it. Uh, Toll-free number 855-450-FREE. I was able to do the research, find out the answer about how the system works in Washington, D.C. This is from dccouncil.us. It's a lengthy article about the just 
arduous process of a bill becoming law in Washington, D.C. So we know the part about, you know, it goes to a committee, it's the city council committee, pass the committee, go to the city council, get voted on, go to the mayor. So that's where we are with the, the cannabis thing. It's past the mayor's office. In Which, most cities, this would be... Done deal. A done deal. Things are a little different in D.C. We'll tell you about the congressional review and the president can get involved on this as well. I'll give you the details coming up here in moments. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. So this is going to be very interesting to see what happens. We'll explain why here in just a few moments. And uh, if we get a chance, we'll get into the 30 things to stop doing to yourself on Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This 
This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want right here toll-free. If you like the show and you want to help support Free Talk Live, you can AMP. Become a Free Talk Live amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. It is a great way for you to get behind the show and help us uh, get more liberty-oriented people tuned into Free Talk Live and people who don't understand what the ideas of freedom are. We want to bring newbies to the ideas of freedom so they can uh, absorb them and consider them and maybe accept them eventually. It's a process, and we are kind of the first step for a lot of people. So if you want to help us get Free Talk Live into more ears, you can become an amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. For 5 bucks a month, you can use any major credit card through PayPal, use Visa or MasterCard right through our website, and we are offering matching funds right now. There are uh, about five or six very generous listeners who have stepped up to match up to $950 per month in AMP contributions. We still have a few hundred bucks that we can raise in this process, uh, and you can help us with that by becoming an amplifier and getting your money matched. So if you do 5 bucks a month, it's like doing 10 uh, If you do 10 bucks a month, it's like being a $20 a month amper. So please go to amp.freetalklive.com. The matching contributions are available for several more months, all the way through October, if I recall correctly, or at least up until uh, October. I think it's through September. Something like that. But either way, several more months. You can help us out. Please go to amp.freetalklive.com. Get perks like access to the AMP-only call-in lines, the AMP-only podcast, forum, and more amp.freetalklive.com now brett is here from the school sucks project and i imagine there is uh, some way for people to support school sucks what is a good way to do that brett? sure absolutely uh we have something called the av club mm-hmm. you might remember the av club from school audiovisual was, yeah all the nerds were in the av club and uh you know we're proud of that today so uh, the av club is audio and video that is not available in the regular podcast ah, feed i later premium learned premium content yeah, premium content yeah and we ask for six dollars a month some people do a little more than that and that's nice. great and um that keeps the show going it's actually uh taken me further and further away from doing educational things that i didn't like and didn't really feel good about like uh academic tutoring and sat tutoring i can devote more time to uh, a real educational pro- uh, project i believe which, which is what the school sucks project is that's what we try to do yep school sucks project.com you can go there get all kinds of audio for free as well at absolutely project yeah. uh, dot com or brett available there so here's the answer we were wondering aloud none of us knew you know what is the what is the process for a bill to become law in Washington D.C. for the District of Criminals, not for the whole country, because everybody knows that part. You know yep. the whole I'm a bill cartoon that everybody watched when they were kids. What was that called? Schoolhouse Rock. Schoolhouse Rock. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, what has happened is cannabis has been passed by cannabis decriminalization has been passed by the D.C. City Council. It has gone to the D.C. Mayor. The D.C. Mayor has signed it. In most cities, that would be it. It'd be, it'd be in the ordinances. It'd be official. It'd be done. But in D.C., according to dccouncil.us, these are the final steps. Although the, at this point, the bill has effectively become an act, its journey to becoming a law that must be obeyed by the populace is not yet complete. Unique to the District of Columbia, an approved act of the council must be sent to the United States House of Representatives and the United States Senate for a period of 30 days before becoming effective as law, or 60 days for certain criminal legislation. So this one is a 60-day period, according to the Mm -hmm. article that we read. So during this 60-day period of congressional review, the Congress may enact into law a joint resolution disapproving of the Council's act. So it was like I suggested that it might be. If they don't do anything, then that's a good thing. If if they want to take action, they have to take action to oppose the act. If, during the 60-day period, the President of the United States approves said joint resolution, then the Council's act is prevented from becoming law. If, however, upon the expiration of the 60-day congressional review period, no joint resolution disapproving the Council's act has been approved by the President, then the bill finally becomes law and is assigned a law number. So this cannabis decrim bill, which decriminalizes up to an ounce of pot with a $25 fine as opposed to a misdemeanor, uh, is going to be an interesting test because... 
Congress will have to do something about it if they want to stop marijuana decrim from happening right under their nose. Congress has never done anything, in my recollection, about doing any kind of marijuana decrim on their own volition. So this is going to either pass by them and they're going to do nothing, or they're going to go ahead and pass a joint resolution saying, no, this the war on drugs is a serious thing, and we are going to stop uh, people from smoking cannabis in our city, and this must remain a misdemeanor. No, we are passing this joint resolution. Then it goes to Barack Obama, who has been speaking out... He hasn't been doing anything politically about it, but he has, within the last three months, had an interview, I think it was the New Yorker magazine, where all of a sudden this guy starts talking about marijuana decriminalization and legalization as though it's time for this to happen and that, you know, he understands it's not as bad as alcohol or, you know, it's it's not as bad as people have been saying it has been. And he admitted to having used it as a, as a young person. He's clever, though, right? Because he gets a lot of credit for the things he says. But that's what I'm saying. He's not doing anything. Because he's a religious figure. For most people. So Obama said, right. you know, um, when he said, ah, I think maybe gays should be able to get married. There was no there was no legislative yeah. effort. There was no it was just and people were tweeting. I'm so proud Yay! to be an American right. today. And it's the same thing with this pot thing. People were like tweeting what he said. There's no action behind it. He just says things, even though he could take action. Right. He could he could on uh, the pot front. Right. He, he could just pardon everybody. And he could pardon every, he could every nonviolent offender who's in uh, federal prison for marijuana. And right. actually, every, every state offender, I believe he could, uh, could pardon. He? I believe he could uh, pardon mm. every state offender if in, if if I understand things right. correctly, I could be wrong, but there's a lot of people. At least you know, at least just the federal inmates could be released. Um, but he won't do that. He, he'll yickety yak. He jib jibber jabber. So uh, so this is interesting because Congress will be put into a position where they can act to get rid of this. But if they do act to get rid of it, Barack Obama has to sign that, and he would have to sign that. After making these statements about marijuana, I mean, he's he's in a safe zone otherwise because Congress isn't going to put marijuana in front of him on their own volition. So yeah. he doesn't have to make that. You know, that's not an issue that he's going to do anything about. Obviously, he's not going to rescind the scheduling of marijuana. It's currently a schedule one. He, as the president, as the head of the executive branch, could wave his magic signing pen and he could tell the DEA to either deschedule marijuana or move it down the list of severity. He's not doing that he's either. He's not doing that either. So the question is, will Congress want to put this issue in front of Barack Obama? And if they do put it in front of Barack Obama, what will he do about it? You sound like you might have just a, a touch of an optimistic tone. Am I misreading that? I think that? they may just let this slide through. I don't know if they're going to want to mess with it. I think they would. Um, the, the thing is, is that uh, the Republicans and the Democrats are on, uh, you know, one's got the Senate, one's got the House. You know, do, they, do any of them really want to put this in front of them? I think you're probably right, Ian. Just 60 days from now, this is going to slide through. I hope I'm right about that. That's, it's interesting. I'm, uh, maybe I'm more of a cynic. You know, I see them shutting this down and nobody ever hearing anything about it. I mean, well, because, we're going to hear about it. I mean, this is getting well, you're going to hear about it. I hope I right. hear about it. I mean, well. really, it's up to our listeners to bring it to our attention by going to our website at freetalklive.com and you know, voting up and submitting articles for us to look at. But we would really want the average American or the average Obama supporter to hear about it. Absolutely. And because he's the one who yep. would be the crux of stopping it. Right. And we'd also like it to be able to get through to them. Without rationalization mm -hmm. or, you know, skimming over what it really is. You want to get through to these people? Brett, yes. I gave up on that years ago when I moved to the Free State Project. You can't get through Eventually to people. Eventually you can. You can't speak logic to nonsense you cannot you cannot twist around people who've spent their whole lives not critically thinking about anything. I mean, you're ta you're not talking about you showing are so them you're cynical, Mark. I mean, people can change. People can absolutely after they've seen enough evidence of corruption and hypocrisy from politicians, they can come to the conclusion, "Huh, oh, crap, you know, Bush was a liar and turns out Obama's a liar yeah. too." Well, screw this. I was and, a lefty. You know, I was a big lefty. There B2, man. But okay, so you're both evidence people can change. I'm not saying people can't change. I'm saying most people can't change. Most people, most people are not trained in critical thinking skills. And you don't even have to be able to think that critically to come to the conclusion that politicians are liars. Oh, and they hypocrites. think that. Yeah, they do, but, but they that, just target. But, 
look, they're political enemies. Most libertarians that you know you talk to are still voting Republican or Democrat in the presidential election because they're petrified uh, because that's what they used to vote, and they're petrified of the other guy getting in. These people don't actually change what they're doing. You can't, and the politicians aren't going to change what they're doing as long as they can continue to get the votes that they need to get. All right, we're going to come back with more here in moments. 855 450 free. 30 things to stop doing to yourself. We will continue that list here in a bit. And uh, we may or may not have Brett with us. He's feeling kind of sick tonight, so I think he might be cutting out a little bit early. But go and get more of him at schoolsucksproject.com. We will continue hour number three here in moments, and you can take control of the airwaves here. What do you think is going to happen in D.C.? You're welcome to speculate, especially if you live there. This is Free Talk Live. Remember how bad your allergies were last year? <laughs> When they hit again, be prepared with new Nasacort Allergy 24-Hour, the first full-strength 24-hour prescription nasal spray available without a prescription. Unlike antihistamines, it blocks more of the body's chemical responses that cause nasal allergy symptoms, relieving the worst of them, including congestion, for 24 hours. New Nasacort Allergy 24-Hour stops more of what makes you miserable. Use as directed may take up to one week of daily use to feel the most symptom relief. Here's something you don't hear on the radio every day someone who can't see. I am totally blind, and I go through periods where I'm unable to sleep at night and feel like I'm constantly running but can never quite catch up. But this isn't a sleep problem. It's something called non-24. Learn about the link between total blindness and your symptoms. Visit learnmorenon24.com or call 855-856-2424. Sponsored by Vanda Pharmaceuticals. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, April 2nd, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,290, silver opened at $19.97, and Bitcoin is trading at $482.10. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org, now offering an eight-week course where you can learn to treat the most common family ailments with simple medicines that you can grow or easily find. Learn more at GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Support also comes from Bitmain Tech, creators of the newly released Antminer S2 Bitcoin Miner. One terahash and only 1,000 watts. Order yours online today at bitmaintech.com. And support comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication along with posters and promotions materials. Online at affordablesound.com or call them 512-459-5253. In the news, since the IRS recently ruled that Bitcoin is property and not currency, how can it be used in the crime of money laundering? That's the question being asked by the lawyer for alleged Silk Road operator Ross Ulbricht. Forbes reports that attorney Ross Dradle has filed a motion arguing that all charges against Ulbricht, including money laundering and conspiracy to traffic in narcotics, be dismissed. More controversy in Albuquerque, New Mexico, where eyewitnesses are questioning the shooting of a fugitive by deputy U.S. Marshals. KRQE is reporting that witnesses claim that Marshals, when they encountered the wanted man sitting in a car, gave their commands to surrender, and immediately opened fire. Eyewitnesses say the fugitive was not armed, sitting with his hands on the steering wheel. He was transported for hospitalized treatment. The outrage follows last Sunday's massive protest in Albuquerque, held to voice opposition to last month's fatal police shooting of homeless resident James Boyd. 
in an effort to combat food shortages and hoarding. The Venezuelan government has introduced a new identification card system for purchasing food. President Nicolas Maduro stated that the new measures will reduce black market sales of food products. The new measures include fingerprint scanning, taking down cell phone numbers of customers, and banning miners from purchasing food. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Sovereign BTC, media marketing and consulting for the Bitcoin ecosystem, operated by Liberty Beat founder John Bush, online, SovereignBTC.com. Support comes from The Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock central, CoreyMooreShow.com. And support for Liberty Beat comes from Roberts and Roberts Brokerage, Inc., precious metals at reasonable rates since 1977, online at rrbi.co. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, April 2nd, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. A controversial classified Senate report on torture concludes that waterboarding and other torture methods did not provide key intelligence in the search for Osama bin Laden. According to the Associated Press and the Washington Post, U.S. officials who have seen the report state that intelligence of significance was not gained through torture, and in some cases, the CIA lied about the effectiveness of information gathered using enhanced interrogation methods. On Sunday afternoon, between 100,000 to 500,000 Taiwanese citizens took to the streets of Taipei to protest a possible international agreement with China that they believe will hurt the sovereignty of their nation. The so-called Sunflower Movement has been occupying Taiwan's legislature for two weeks. At one point, nearly 20,000 protesters held the presidential office building. Concerned citizens believe the cross-strait trade and services agreement will give China more influence over Taiwanese matters. NATO announced a suspension of all practical civilian and military cooperation with Russia on Tuesday, condemning the country's illegal intervention in Ukraine as Moscow turned the financial screws on Kiev by hiking the cost of gas. Al Jazeera reports that NATO foreign ministers have issued a strongly worded report that says the Russian takeover of Crimea represented a violation of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks, CHL courses, self-defense training, and firearm sales. Give them a call, 512-731-3585, or online at centraltexasgunworks.com. And support comes from Cabo Bob's, Southwest Burritos with Homemade Tortillas, online at cabobobs.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, April 2nd, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Remember, spread liberty with a smile. <laughs> if you're a parent, chances are you know all about the spooky truth books with subjects ranging from shadowy fraternal organizations to mind-controlling TV shows. Kids can't get enough of this series of short, scary children's novels. And spooky truth author K.L. Graves is joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. Now, my kids just love these books. In just four years, you put out 25 books. <laughs> it came from Tower 7, Curse of the Chemtrails, The Zionist Who Cried Holocaust. Now, this stuff has really been catching on. Over 40 million copies sold. Sold so many bestsellers out there. Yeah, I've been thrilled. Before this series, I was self-publishing pamphlets and handing them out on the train. Now I get emails from teachers and parents all the time telling me that my books are all their kids can talk about. Oh, well, it's true. My son used to hate to read. Now he's holed up in the basement with these spooky truth books all day and night. Says he never watches TV, doesn't even want tap water anymore. He just loves reading so much. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want if you dial toll-free right now, 855-450-FREE. 855-450-3733 as we enter into our number three of this program. Still to come here tonight, 30 Things to Stop Doing to Yourself. We'll continue on this list, which Brett and I started about a week ago. Uh, Brett from School Sucks Project, who has unfortunately had to leave early tonight. He is sick. And uh, so he's going to go get some rest. But we'll continue that list when we get a chance. For those of you just tuning in, the last hour, we spent the bulk of the hour discussing the D.C. law or this, the D.C. Act that is not yet a law, but it is darn close. That was a decriminalization act 
or a bill that has now become an act because the mayor has signed it in D.C. It now has to go to a 60-day-long congressional review where the Congress folks, Senate and uh, legislature, will have the opportunity to pass a, what's called a joint resolution. So it would have to pass both the Senate and the leg- the, uh, the Congress people, or wait, the Senate and the House. reps in the House. That's what I'm looking for. It would have to pass them both and then be signed by the president in order to stop the bill from becoming a law in D.C. of decriminalization of cannabis. And there was some speculation on the show in the last segment about what are the odds? What is the likelihood that the entirety of the federal government, basically, the majority of the entirety of the federal government, will stand in the way of the D.C. City Council and the D.C. Mayor and stop marijuana decriminalization from happening? Right. And let's not forget that this is the do-nothing Congress to part de. Um, and the fact is, is that they do very little. They can't agree on anything. Can they agree that um, that uh, Washington D.C. needs to keep small amounts of marijuana um, a criminal offense? So here is what I dug up during the news break as I was trying to find out what my question was. Well, when was the last time they actually did stop something? How often do they use this congressional oversight ability that they have? And I was able to find the answer. I don't know when the last time was, but I was able to find a, a decent enough answer. Yeah, you got an, you got an answer. This from DCist.com. It's an article written back in January of this year about a, a, a Eleanor Holmes, Eleanor Holmes Norton, excuse me. She is Democratic from D.C. She's a representative of some sort uh, that is going to be putting to, she's putting forth a, a law a proposed law a bill, if you will, to uh, try to end the 30-day congressional review of D.C. laws. It's called the District of Columbia Paperwork Reduction Act. She submitted it. And this has come through before, but it's never actually passed. Uh, so they're trying again. The idea would be it would eliminate the congressional review period for legislation passed by the D.C. City Council, which is 30 days for civil bills and 60 days for criminal but not just any type of days, legislative days, which means the review process can take quite some time, while there's now a handy effective date calculator. So, for instance, I was reading a different article, and it said uh, that if if they put in the bill near October when Congress takes a break, it could take four months, because if they're not in session, then the review period doesn't apply until right. they're in session. So it could be a four-month process. In the case of the, the marijuana decrim, it'll be within the next 60 days. So, uh, the, the congressional review process for D.C. bills provide no benefit to Congress, but impose substantial costs on the district, said Norton in a statement. Indeed, Congress effectively abandoned the congressional review process as a mechanism for overturning D.C. legislation 23 years ago, which suggests that the last time they used it was 23 years ago, because what happened was there was a Home Rule Act that was passed in 1973 uh, because the D.C. Council is still required to use what is described as Kafkaesque make-work procedures to comply with the abandoned congressional review process that was established in 1973. Indeed, since home rule went to if, uh, into effect, according to DCS.com, Washington, D.C. has sent more than 4,500 legislative acts to Congress. This is in a 40-year 41-year period. So since all of their happened. legislative acts, and they've all been sent to Congress, so 4,500. Which, in turn, Congress has only exercised its right to disapprove just three times. Three times in 40 years. If Norton's act is passed, D.C.'s bills would become law after being signed by the mayor. So that's the proposal on the table. But the interesting detail is that three times in 41 years, Congress has used their ability to pass a joint resolution to override and to stop the D.C. bureaucrats or D.C. politicians from passing laws. So, so that tells me there's about uh, about a you know zero point something percent chance that Congress yep. is going to stop cannabis from being decriminalized. I, I agree with you. I don't think they're going to do that. However, the likelihood of a legislative body, any legislative body, body giving up 
power, mm -hmm. that, even power that they don't, don't use, use. Uh, seems unlikely. So I am not in the corner of this bill passing. Mm -hmm. I am, however, in the corner of the, uh, the the marijuana decriminalization bill passing, which I hope puts pressure on not only our governor, who's yes. going to be seeing a decriminalization bill come across her desk in a relatively short period of time, but other governors Which too. she could do the same thing to, right? She could just sit back and not veto it. If I'm not mistaken. I don't know how it works in New I Hampshire. I believe that you can do that as a governor in New Hampshire. You can just allow things to pass. Okay. So she doesn't have to sign the bill. And so she could do the same thing. You know, it's not going but in front she of she might as well at that point because the police union, whoever, whatever, whatever other unions are, um, you know, basically on the take with her, um, that she's on the take with. Yeah, but then there'll be a, like a photo op of her signing it. She's not going to want that. She wants to make her buddies in the cop world uh, happy. So let's go to the phones. That's my prediction for what it's worth on what's going to happen in D.C. And yes, hopefully that will have some sort of a cascading effect on other marijuana decrim possibilities across the country. Let's go to Mark. He's listening in Tampa to LRN.FM. Hey, Mark, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello. I just wanted to talk about the uh, school sucks. I, I kind of wanted to go on the other side of that. But before I got into that, I, I want to tell you a quick story. It's, it's totally contradictory what I'm going to talk about school sucks. But uh, my kids are in high school, and they play um, sports in the state of Florida, and they wear glasses. So we purchase sports goggles for them, protect okay. their eyes, and it's sunny in Florida, you know, 300 days a year. So we got the transition lenses, which, if anybody doesn't know, it gets in sunlight. They turn into sunglasses. You go inside, they, they're regular glasses. Right. They tint on their own. So my kids cannot wear sunglasses to play sports because in Florida they pass some sort of law or rule or some nonsense about the referees, the umpires, the coaches or whatever need to see the kids' eyes at all times to check for concussions. What? I, I just I thought that was the most absurd thing. So we had to go buy regular sports goggles that weren't tinted. I don't know if you guys ever heard anything like that. It's ridiculous. Just, I, 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 as though a, a referee is going to be able to identify a concussion while they're playing. That doesn't make any exactly. sense. Exactly. I mean, if they want to, if or they want to do some examination, they should just do an examination. Um, right. But... Yeah. I mean, it's just absolutely absurd. I couldn't believe it. So we Plus, go sunglasses outside. provide protection from the sun. I mean, you're <laughs> whatever protection you're giving them from concussions, you're taking away in the fact that you know they're they're getting glare Not in their eyes. The UV rays yeah, or whatever. It's affecting their vision. Yeah, I, I didn't realize like referees and umpires were were trained medical technicians <laughs> to check for concussions yeah. uh, too. You know that they took a class. Yeah, that's news to me. So what else did you anyway, want to share, but, uh, Mark? I want to talk about school sucks, like. I want to kind of be on the other side of that. You guys talk about the school sucks, and I don't really ar argue that so much, but I don't think they all suck. I don't think that schools across the board, you say school sucks. My kids are in government schools, and we're having a great experience with it. Now, I, I agree with you that it shouldn't be forced on people to pay. I think that's the primary issue. But as a school system, it, it, I think it's just it's so very, varied so much where you're at. And what school you go to, because somebody like, uh, I think it's Ian, you don't have any kids, I, you mm -hmm. know, and you're forced to pay property taxes, which I don't necessarily, I don't know, I can, I can go either way on that. But I think you benefit from people that go to school and learn how to read and write and do other things. Okay, well, I want you to stand so, by if you don't mind. It's, it's unfortunate that you called at this point in the show because Brett from School Sucks Project He's sick tonight. He had to leave this hour, so uh, he's he will not be able to respond to you, but I will be happy to do so, and Mark will as well here in moments. So stand by, Mark. Uh, we'll uh, bring you back and continue the discussion about school and suckiness. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. This is Free Talk Live. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. If you've got aches and pain and soreness, it could be chronic inflammation. Listen to Dave talk about Relief Factor 4. 
I was in a sawmill accident and suffered with pain and discomfort for 60 years. I heard about Relief Factor 4 and decided to order it. And in four days, I was walking without a limp and without pain. I am thrilled. For more information or to order Relief Factor 4, go online at relieffactor4.com. That's relieffactor4.com. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live, and you are invited to dial toll-free and bring up whatever you'd like. 855-450-FREE is the number. We'll continue with your calls and thoughts here. And you can join us online at freetalklive.com. News updates, we have them for you. There are, they're available in multiple formats. There's the Facebook, Google+, and Twitter, where we will update during the show. We'll post show prep that we're discussing. We'll post questions that we have to ask uh, or looking to get your input on. And uh, so it's kind of like an as-it-happens as sort of granular update. And then for more occasional updates, but also more important updates, sign up for our email list. We'll send you the brand new Free Talk Live Weekly Digest email, which is being put together on a weekly basis. And it, it highlights some of the most popular stories as voted and submitted by you, the listeners, on our website. 
website at freetalklive.com. It highlights those for the last week, and it also highlights the latest episode of the Free Talk Live Weekly Digest audio file as well. So that's a great little thing to get into your email box. You can get signed up for that over at news.freetalklive.com. Actually, there's now a, on the website, just on the front page, if you look on the left-hand side of freetalklive.com, you will see an email sign-up box there now. So it's now easier than ever to sign up for the Free Talk Live email list and start getting those Free Talk Live Weekly Digest and the occasional update as well. Do you drink coffee? Do you love a good cup of coffee? Well, then ask, let me ask you this. Why do you continue to drink crappy store-bought coffee? When you can go to coffee.freetalklive.com. It's convenient. It's right there at the grocery store. It's, it's convenient when you go through the grocery store. That's no doubt. But it doesn't taste as good as BuzzBox coffee. Well, what could be more convenient than having the coffee delivered to your front door? That's true. Or wherever you get your mail. Uh, BuzzBox will make that happen for you. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Get a free pound. We know you got to try it out, see if you like it. Get a free pound there. You sign up for the subscription, and coffee will be delivered to you on a regular basis. You decide You decide the interval. You decide the quantity, what, what works for you in your life. And I say guess a little high because, you know, if you end up with an extra pound of coffee in four months or something like that, it's not a problem. You can give it away to a friend and as you tweak your um, your subscription. And you're going to help uh, people around the world because what Free Talk Live's goal is here is to get a 1,000 of our listeners on board to buy coffee from us. And in that way, we can fund 100 microloans through World Vision. And that will help people in third world countries get loans to start their own businesses and, and get the hand up they need. Because this is what I believe really changes lives is when people are invested in their own futures. Not when you, you know, somebody decides, oh, they need a well, let's go dig a well. Or they need, uh, you know, this thing or that thing. No, what they know what they need. You just need to give them the ability to do it. And you can do that and enjoy all awesome coffee, the kind of coffee I get to drink every morning, which is really great, BuzzBox Coffee at coffee.freetalklive.com. All right, let's go back to Mark. He's in Tampa. He's got kids in, uh, is it, are, they, are they in the government school system there, Mark? Yeah, public school. Kids in yeah, the government-run school system. And you were saying that for your family, it's been a great experience so far. You think that some schools are better than others and uh, that school doesn't necessarily suck when it's run by the government. That was kind of your point in, in calling tonight. Is that right? Right. And, and just to throw a little more into that, like I went to a private school. My parents paid for a private school, and I don't see um, where I am better off than they were. And it was I went to both, too. And I, I would, uh, you know, in my private school was better than many of the classes I took in a public school, but they had other good classes. I just didn't see the attention from the teachers, um, you know, that way. I went to a private school. I was on the dean's list. The very next year, I failed two courses in uh, public school. So I'd say that the attention of the teachers uh, was, was an issue. But even but, if you're having a good experience at the government school. Right. Well, I mean, that's that's a really important thing. If you, I mean, lots of people are having good experiences, and that's awesome. But I think that here's a really important question is, is, I don't know if you're wealthy or if you're comfortable or whatever, but you would agree that there are plenty of people who are in the middle class and upper middle class who are sending their kids to your, your kid's school, right? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Why the hell should I pay to send their kids to school? They don't pay to send mine to school. Well, that... And, and I, I kind of, I mean, I agree to that to a point, but I think Which point? like that I'm on the fence with whether you should pay or not, because I think you benefit, all, all people benefit from people getting an education. Well, then I why the, the hell, benefit. if the education is so great at your public school, why the hell don't we force all the kids in your community to go to that school? <laughs> see, this well, is the point. Have... You see, there's one school in your community that people get f to go to for free, and it's middle-class welfare. You, likely, and your friends and neighbors and uh, you know people in, in that same little geographic area, you send your kids to this public school for free that I would, you know, if I lived in that neighborhood and I homeschooled my kid, that my kid's education would be, because, uh, I mean, you know, if I had four or $5,000 a month more, I'd be able a to year. spend that much, excuse me, a year more, I'd be able to spend that on my kid's education. But because I choose not to send it to the school that you think is awesome, my kid's education is uh, detrimented. I mean, it's, it's money out of his pocket. And 
I'm just sick and tired of middle class welfare. If we want a means test for kids, then let's means test and send the bottom 10 per- and make sure that the bottom 10 percent get some kind of uh, scholarship. That's what the argument always is. But you know as well as I do, if you had your property taxes back and the marketplace was working for schools, that um, it would drive because when there's competition, it drives down prices. Prices would be driven down, and you'd be able to pay to send your kid to school with the money that you currently send to the government to to send kids to school well yeah you make a good point but also in my i know this is just my situation i have two kids in a public school and my property taxes for for the school portion are roughly like 2500 a year yeah and i there's no way that i could educate my kids in a private school in the today's ki- market the private school around the corner from me does 1500 dollars a year um, i don't know that we can necessarily say where the uh, where a where a free market in education would drive prices down to um, so i mean i'm not saying i'm not saying you're wrong but i am saying that we just don't know i mean there are private schools in this country that uh, subsidize Kids' educations, usually religious, and um, the kids get great educations as a result. Right. You know, who knows what the market would come up with, what innovations would come up with to uh, educate kids. Because another thing that, you know, keep in mind here, let's bring me back into this picture because I don't have a child. And you pointed me out before as well. I'm benefiting because, you know, it's good that people who are young know how to read and, and write. And uh, there's there's varying levels of that out of the government schools, even somewhat decent government schools are not particularly good at this. I have known young people who've gone to decently, you know, government schools that are considered good, and they suck at reading. Uh, I mean, they just don't want to do it because they've been forced to read, and that does something to young people. When you're forced against your will to do something that you're not interested in, forced to read books that you're not interested in on your own, it might kill your drive to learn. The yardstick is warped because... Public schools are the yardstick, and so therefore private schools are measured by this yardstick. And uh, you know, I mean, we don't even we don't even really know what uh, kids who got to participate in their own educations yeah. what that world would what, be like. What if I think that the educational model that is used by the government schools is decrepit? It's dumb. It's uh, it's designed to actually dumb people down is designed to create a worker class of non-thinking, non-critical thinking drones who will just plug into a system and do what they're told for the rest of their lives. And I don't want to support that. You know what? I actually do support the school down the street. Mark will give you a chance to respond here in a moment. I I support a private school on my own volition. It's Free Talk Live. If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now I can help you reduce or eliminate your tax debts and end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I've helped thousands of people reduce and eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. And with the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions 
and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phones, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. If you're looking for work, or even if you're not, here's an innocent mistake you really want to avoid. Never return calls before listening to your voicemail. Your wireless phone sends calls you didn't answer into voicemail, and it shows you phone numbers for calls you missed. Important, don't call back callers you missed until you have first listened to your messages. Otherwise, you frustrate people who bothered to leave messages by asking them to repeat a message they just left as your voicemail greeting instructed them to. If you're a job applicant, this alone could be a deal killer. And even if you're not, there are few things you can convey to someone that are as fundamentally maddening as, I didn't hear you. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. For more tips for job seekers and everyone else, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Take control here toll free at 855-453. We're talking about school and whether or not it sucks. Caller suggested that, hey, you know, it's possible to have a good experience at the government schools. Kind of the old I turned out all right argument. Uh, we'll get back, I don't disagree with that argument. We'll get back into that here in moments. One of the things the government schools is not very good at doing is turning out leaders. The government school system, and you, you can go and you can look at the history of the government school system. There's a great uh, underground history of American education. John Taylor Gatto is this... Uh, recognized, notable teacher of the year for New York State who's kind of come out speaking out against the government school system um, and kind of the Prussian model, which is also employed by a lot of private schools as well. Well, uh, like I said, the public school system is the yardstick by which everything's measured. So it, because you have this incredibly large player in the marketplace, probably more than – certainly more than 90 percent of students go through the public school system, everything's basically just uh, ranked off of that. Yeah, so you've got this uh, this model that is designed to create these drones, as I was describing in the last hour, these – People who are not able to critically think, they are discouraged from standing up and questioning questioning authority, etc. They are certainly not giving new leadership classes in government schools. you got to do it yourself. Yeah, that's right. And Dr. Matt Barney, who is the uh, founder of LeaderAmp, has uh, coached and taught thousands of successful leaders around the world over the past 20 years using uh, the latest science in uh, this area. And by science, what I mean is, is, you know, things that have been tested and been shown to work in the areas of development and persuasion, things like that. Um, Dr. Barney has drafted blueprints for a new smartphone application. So this is going to be a smartphone app that measures each person and tailors a customized development plan for um, for them. And that's going to be really great. Now, some of it's going to be through, you know, work uh, work that you do yourself. Some of it comes through the uh, through the smartphone itself. His vision is to build a community who you can access approaches that really work with other people and support each other's development as leaders. It'll also, you know, sort of you can show each other results and that kind of thing. And that's going to help everybody. There's also going to be they're, they're going to rank uh, sort of famous people so that you can see that people like Gandhi and Steve Jobs, 
weren't perfect, but they overcame their limitations with practice and got better at what they did. Now, the app isn't ready quite yet. Now, I have signed up over at leaderamp.freetalklive.com because I want to be ready when it comes out. Um, and this is what I'm excited for. Uh, once it's built, you'll be able to, uh, if you want to um, you know, participate, you can um, you know, help other liberty lovers advance their persuasion skills. And I think it's really, it's really going to be a great idea. It's leaderamp.freetalklive.com to amp your leadership, leaderamp.freetalklive.com. All right, let's go back to the phones here. The uh, gentleman we were talking with, Mark in Florida, has dropped off the line. He was the individual who was saying that, hey, you know, my kids go to government school. They're having a good time. Everything's been pleasant so far. And, you know, maybe you should pay for it because we want kids to be able to read and write. He, well, he's just looking at it from one standpoint. And I, I don't doubt that his kids go to what he considers to be a good public school. I went to one and you went to one, Ian. But the results and are... And mine, the one that I went to, was better than the public schools in the, uh, the rest of the county. It was yep. a decent school in comparison. But that's the thing. We're talking about about comparing government schools here and what you don't know is the unseen and the seen right we see government schools we can compare them with one another we can see which government schools are better than the other government schools yes. but what we can't see is what we would have in the absence of everyone being forced to put money into a monopolistic system run by bureaucracy that has no real incentive to innovate and to change and to really teach kids in the most effective way or maybe to allow kids kids to learn in the most effective way. Some argue for unschooling, which says that you don't need this centralized bureaucracy. You don't need even a centralized teacher in a room, that you just need you know, the basics to have the kids learn the basics and then set them loose and let them teach themselves things. I don't know if that's the best way for all kids to learn, but it certainly is a great way for some of them to learn, and I'd like to see more experimentation, more, more choices in the marketplace. I don't support the one-size-fits-all government system, and I don't want to send any money into it, because not only do I not support the system itself, and how it turns out kind of these drone uh, students. But I also, uh, you know, I don't like the fact that students are subject to search at any uh, given moment. There are, in a lot of these government schools these days, the police are bringing through drug dogs. They're doing uh, backpack searches. They're, they're stopping classes. They're getting kids out of the class. They're running a dog through. They're stopping on backpacks. They're searching. They're searching lockers. They're searching cars in the parking lot. We've seen Boy Scouts go to jail because they uh, found a knife and a medical kit in, in a car in a parking lot. I mean, we've seen the ridiculous zero tolerance rules in almost every government school where you know kids can't have an inhaler. They can't have an aspirin. They can't have a butter knife. They can't have a squirt gun. I mean, it's just the most ridiculous nonsense. So uh, these schools are acclimating uh, students to police to the police state, which, of course, is one of the roles of the government school. Get get the kids used to being ruled. Get them used to being controlled. Get them used to the bells dinging when they go from class to class, just like in prison. I mean, I think it's a terrible place to be, not to mention all the propagandizing that goes on as well. You want a pro-government stance on the issues? Go listen to a government history class. I mean, there's just plenty of brainwashing going on in these places. I want nothing to do with it. And I don't care if some people can read after they graduate. I would rather support the schools that are doing the job that I want to see done. And so as a minister of the Shire Free Church... Uh, we gave a, a check to the local school here. There's a school just down the street, the Waldorf School in uh, the Monadnock area of, uh, of New Hampshire. And they have a different kind of method of, uh, of approaching their educational curriculum there. And it's a more freedom-oriented uh, method from the conversations I was having. I sat down and talked to their uh, their headmaster or whatever they're called, the dean or whoever the boss is yeah, of the, the school. Boss. And she invited me in, and we sat down and chatted for like 40-some minutes, and it was a great conversation. And, and I left there thinking, yeah, you know, this is, a, this is a school worthy of supporting in comparison to the government schools. So it's not like I object to the idea of kids learning stuff. Obviously, that's a good idea. I just have a, a ton of objections to the government school system. So let's go to your, uh, your calls and thoughts. Uh, Brian is on the line, also in New Hampshire, uh, in the Nashua area. Brian, you're on Free Talk Live. Brian on Skype. Brian going once. Brian going twice. Um, oh. oh, there he is. Yes, I'm still here, guys. It Go was ahead. a great lead, great lead in, by the way. Thanks. I was just going to say that schools, public schools, 
are really just prisoner training, who at a very young age, you're subjected to being forced to, you know, you're just a child, you're forced to be subjected to attending this, this, um, this premise from the certain hours of the day. You can't leave during certain times. You have to be sitting at a certain time. And you, when it comes to the getting the drug dogs being searched, you really get, you really get used to not having any rights. So what what this really leads into is the the greater the greatest scenario. Yes, I don't like paying for their schools, but what about this? In California, mothers that allow their kids to skip school and be homeschooled are sentenced to 180 days in jail. Wow. Yes, I'm uh, looking at the story uh, from 2010. A mother let her uh, only allowed her uh, 13-year-old daughter who was bullied to skip 90 days of school. <laughs> And her penalty was from the California judge saw no other option. The truancy law says she must attend. So the mother goes to jail for a half a year. Wow, that's, that's going to make life a lot better at home. Yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be good for that kid. They're going to really learn a lot. Oh, yeah. They're going to learn a lot when basically they, they basically just learned that they're criminals. You're, you have no freedom. You're going to go. You have to complete this curriculum or you're just going to be stuck there your entire life. It's just the government way. You know, it's really frustrating um, for, for for folks to, to it's 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 a it's a difficult situation because, you know, I live in a town. Everybody says, you know, this, well, we've got a great school, and I don't know. I couldn't tell you one way or the other whether we have a good school, and I couldn't rate that school based on, you know, the school that I went to. Um, the last caller, Mark, said that uh, the the private. The public school was as good as the private school he went to, by his estimation. But how would I know how good? How would I even know how to compare these? If I'm if I go to kindergarten one day and sit in the back of the class for Jack, is it gonna? Am I gonna be able to tell the difference between the kindergarten class that I went to and the one 40 years later that Jack's in? Good call tonight, sir. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate hearing from you. And by the way, Brian was on uh, Skype there. You can connect to us with Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Technical note, if you're calling on Skype and we don't answer, just try calling later. It usually means we're on the call. And if we're on a call on Skype, we can't take, we can't put a call on hold. It just doesn't have that ability. More coming up. It's Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Uncover a simple privacy loophole that can stop the NSA spying thugs in their tracks at privacylockdown.com. The NSA has already shut down hundreds of sites, and to truth be told, they could shut down this operation at any time. See, the privacy loophole I'm about to show you allows you to make all your sensitive information disappear in the next 30 days or less. Go to privacylockdown.com now to take your life off the grid and see the loophole in the NSA and FBI spying machine before they close the loophole forever. Go to privacylockdown.com. It's already too late. Criminals have kicked in your door and are now in your home. Before this happens, homeowners have a choice. One, do nothing and hope you aren't one of the 1.4 million families attacked each year. Or two, refuse to be a victim and for as low as $59, reinforce your doors with door devils. Door devils simply attach to existing door frames and have proven to stop the biggest bad guys from kicking in doors. Read our police testimonials of real-life events at doordevil.com. Alarms don't stop kick-ins. We do. Doordevil.com. Free Talk Live. Three-year-old child lost his arm after being viciously attacked by a pit bull terrier earlier this month. Gosh, 
Now the incident has moved a state lawmaker to author legislation that will effectively ban the pit bull breed in the entire state of Oklahoma. Wow. Wouldn't um, all of uh, Mr. Wesselhoff's constituents be a little safer if, if we all just couldn't have any dogs at all? That's true. It would guarantee that no one yeah. would uh, be bitten by dogs. Right. And then and no what cats. What about cats? They scratch people. They, scr- they scr- do scratch people. And, it you know, there it, it leaves a nasty infection. It could. Certainly. It, it certainly. We should ban infections, too, while mm-hmm. we're at it. I mean, while we're protecting everyone from everything. Birds can carry the flu. We know yep. that. You know, so. we should just exterminate all, all animals with teeth. <laughs> well, forget the teeth. <laughs> the birds have no teeth. I say we kill them all. Uh, just every animal. Yeah. Okay. What about insects? You could just sign a law that bans mosquitoes. <laughs> That'd be great. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up what you want. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Even in these remaining moments, there is enough time for you and your thoughts. With you tonight, it is Ian. And Mark. Don't forget, you can join us online at freetalklive.com. And if you like the show and you like what we're doing here on Free Talk Live, share us. Share your favorite episode, whether in audio or video form. (coughs) Share it on your favorite social bookmarking website. And uh, we sure do appreciate it when you do that for us. Of course, there's the AMP program as well at amp.freetalklive.com. But if you want to learn about how you can kind of share the ideas of Free Talk Live, there's a promote page on our website. You can go to promote.freetalklive.com. You can get uh, the actual real-life flyers if you want to you know, put up some flyers on a bulletin board at a college or a coffee shop or something like that. We've got real-life outreach tools that you can utilize as well as online things that you can do like liking us on Facebook and that sort of thing. So go to promotes.freetalklive.com as we continue. We've got Dave in Nevada on the amp lines. Hello, Dave. You're on with Ian and Mark. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey, what's on your mind tonight, Dave? Um, I wanted to talk about how, I guess, the police state kind of goes beyond police, especially, you know, since all the, the terrorist stuff where they, you know, even the DHS has their own documents that they get to businesses and stuff like that. So I had, uh, I was actually earlier today, an incident with a security guard where I pulled into a, a certain uh, hotel casino on the, the strip, or I guess it's sort of the strip. Um, and I was kind of, kind of uh, going through to go to the, the parking garage, so parking garage. So it was kind of confusing, and I guess I, I turned into this area where I guess people walk, but, I mean, it's like pavement. Um, there, there wasn't many people there. So a security guard came over, you know, told me. I was already turning around, you know, told me whatever that, you know, not to go that way. It was obvious. And mm-hmm. then this uh, big security guard who kind of looked like Chris Christie, actually, <laughs> um, started yelling, you know. Uh, so I rolled down my window, and he's yelling at me, kind of, you know, talking down to me, berating me. And I'm like, you know, um, you don't need to, to talk to me like that. I don't, I don't appreciate, you know, you talking to me like that. And just because, you know, I kind of just turned into this little area, and it's just that whole police attitude, and we're better than you, and, and you have to obey what we say. And it was just, it was basically over, over nothing. Well, some and security guards are really laid back, cool guys, and others are wannabe cops. And it sounds like you encountered a wannabe cop. 
Yeah, basically. But but I know that there's a lot of, in general, um, through Homeland Security where they do have all these documents that they give to business owners and they give to, you know, mall security and stuff like that where they say, look for this, look for that. Oh, really? Well, so it seems like – it, it seems like in general they're more cautious, like, you know, just because I, I turned a little in an area where, where no one was even there. I mean, it was like 5 o'clock. But what you're but, saying um, is is that uh, the, the the government probably either either um, because either um, they believe – either they're intending to do this or they're just sort of – this is what they do as a result. This is what happens is that sort of the whole – paradigm of superiority and inferiority the authority paradigm is uh, propagated so i mean this security guard who has no real power over you the casino you accidentally turned into in the sort of the wrong spot isn't going to do anything to you but he's got this you know like i'm in charge here kind of thing and and it 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 it, it uh, spans our whole lives um, and it's amazing how people, you give them a little bit of power and they're, they're just this way. I mean, you mm -hmm. can find it with, uh, you know, sort of the receptionist at uh, some offices will be just kind of a jerk um, because they can be. And that really stinks to have to deal with that situation. And it's, it, it, doesn't, it's not it doesn't help the business you're representing at all. And it's just one of those situations where employees don't help make you money as a business. They, you get the employees that don't lose as much as the others. Because this guy, you're probably not going to feel that great about this casino in the, going on in the future. No, I, I was going to, you know, make a complaint. Um, I, I usually, you know, don't do that. But, yeah, why am I going to come here? Although I bet you a lot of security guards at other um you know, ho hotels on, on a strip are like that as well. But and, and I totally agree with what you're saying, but it's also like it seems like this mentality, though, has gone, you know, further and further right. to, you know, this whole security mentality, this whole, you know, uh, police kind of mentality and security mentality. And I mean, you would have thought I just ran somebody over or something. <laughs> I mean, the way this guy was acting. Well, it, it, you know, to his mind, it's one of those situations where you could have. You've just turned it into a pedestrian area. Dear God, there could have been a baby underneath your tire. It's nuts. But, but that, see, and that, that's what I think is the whole thing where, you know, just like with terrorism, they're totally exaggerating everything that mm -hmm. this is carrying yes. over. And especially with casinos, because they even have, you know, the people that are running for sheriff and stuff like that saying that, oh, the strip is a – you know, a uh, high value target or whatever their jargon is, yeah. you know, so we got to make sure that they no said the same thing about you know, uh, Keene, New Hampshire's downtown. When we had the right. pumpkin festival, <laughs> Keene, New Hampshire was a high value target just because there were people there. You know, it also gives the security guard something to come home and tell his family about. He can talk about how he stopped some maniac from running people down on the walkway by the hotel. So, and then that's pretty sad if that's uh, his exciting. You know, well, right. I mean, he's got. It gives him some sort of reason to exist, right? Like he was there. He exerted himself. He, you know, did. He took control of the situation. He probably feels like he was in the right completely. He probably feels like you were some kind of punk for messing with him. You probably talked back to him. Um, and I mean, he's probably got his own version of the story that he's telling his buddies. Well, and I actually did. That's what I told him, too. And I, and I think, you know, we need to kind of stand. I look at him as kind of a bully, and it's funny. He looks like Chris Christie. But, um, it, you know, that I told him, like, I don't appreciate you talking to me like that. You know, why yeah. are you sitting there yelling at me? And a lot of people will just, you know, get all scared and whatever because yeah. they could, you know, call well, the police. And the way the police are in, in Vegas, you know, they come down and shoot you. So. Yeah, and a lot of people would cuss him out and be a real, uh, you know, be as much of a jerk to him as he was to them um, in their minds. And... You did exactly the right thing, which is to just say, you know, I'm an adult. You don't speak to adults like that. Yeah. No, Take thank you, road. sir. No, thank you, young man. You get <laughs> you, you go on back in your little cage. Hey, thanks, Dave, for the call and sharing your thoughts thanks. tonight. Appreciate hearing from you at 855-450 free. Sounds like that security guard could use a review of the 30 things to stop doing to yourself. <laughs> You're going to get this in the last three minutes. You're right, No, buddy? I'm going to get to maybe one of them oh, in the last uh, three minutes. Unless you want to start a whole new article at this point. No, go ahead. Uh, You've just so, been teasing it the whole show. Right, so let's look at one of them in here. Last week, we caught on, we did the first two, uh, stop spending time with the wrong people and stop running from your problems. Number three on the list of 30 from lifebuzz.com. Stop lying to yourself. You can lie to anyone else in the world, but you can't lie to yourself. Our lives only improve when we take chances. And the first and most difficult chance that we can take 
is to be honest with ourselves. Well, I think that you can't be honest with yourself while you're being dishonest with other people. Um, mm. If you're any good at being dishonest, you have to create a world where the thing that, that the lie that you've told is true, mm, and yeah. so you have to live in a lie. I think that the one of the first steps with being uh, you know honest with yourself is to, in fact, be honest with other people. It makes it a heck of a lot easier. Um, there's really just not there's not many good arguments for dishonesty certainly there's certain mm -hmm. circumstances where i can see why one would have to uh you know tell a lie in order to protect oneself from say a government agent or something like that i don't believe that i don't believe that a robber has the right to know how much money you have in your pocket uh for instance but um or I, answering does this make me look fat well i you know i it <laughs> depends i think it depends on your relationship no, i think um, I think you're right about that. I mean, if it does make them look fat, you should probably should answer, yeah, that's awful. You should try something else. Mm. Um, but, you know, I don't have a relation. I don't have that relationship where I feel like, does this make me look fat is a loaded question. Thank God, because I wouldn't put up with it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's times when I, I think you need to. Uh, but I, no, but you're either going to be good at telling a lie on the fly or you're going to be bad at it. And to be good at telling lies on the fly, you basically have to tell a lot of lies on the fly. Be practiced at it, yeah. Anybody can lie um, if they're practiced. Most people can lie if they're practiced. And so, you know, that's... Uh, just a fact about lying, I guess. Number four, stop putting your own needs on the back burner. The most painful thing is losing yourself in the process of loving someone too much and forgetting that you're special too. Yes, help others, but help yourself too. If there was ever a moment to follow your passion and do something that matters to you, that moment is now. And I think another way to put that is that you really can't be of much help to others if you don't take care of yourself. I mean, what good are you going to do if you don't take care of yourself financially, if you don't care, take care of yourself physically? I mean, you can't help somebody out if you can't pay your own bills. Agreed. Right? So, uh, so make sure you take care of yourself first and foremost. Make yourself a valuable person. Make yourself useful. You know, go and give. You, and then when you have enough for yourself, it'll be easy for you to give to charity. It'll be easy for you to give up your time uh, to help others as well. It's not to say you can't help others while helping yourself, but you know, keep yourself in mind. We'll see you tomorrow night online. In the meantime, between now and then at freetalklive.com. Enjoy all the features on the website there, including the main feature that allows you to actually create the content that you see on the site. You can actually submit what you want there and have other listeners vote it up or down whether they like or dislike. So go check that out. We'll see you tomorrow night at freetalklive.com. A congressman recently revealed that legislation totaling 2,900 pages and involving more than $1 trillion was available to members of Congress for less than 48 hours to study and consider. That's over 60 pages of legislation per hour. Do you think anyone read the entire bill? I'm Jim Babka with DownsizedDC.org. Consider a proposal buried in a 3,200-page, $388 billion bill, which would have empowered committee chairmen or their agents to examine Americans' tax returns. When this horrible provision came to light, no one claimed to know how it got into the bill. One congressman question said, I didn't write it, I didn't approve it, I wasn't even consulted. If your attorney represented you this way, he might be disbarred. But this is how Congress represents you every day. That's why DownsizedDC.org has created the Read the Bills Act. You can force Congress to read their bills before they pass them at DownsizedDC.org. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. You want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too. Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone. 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Cop Block Radio is up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. 
Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com slash U.S. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. Today is Wednesday, April 2nd, 2014. Radio VR News. President Obama says 7 million people have enrolled in Obamacare and it's here to stay. White House correspondent Mark Smith reports. At a Rose Garden rally with backers, the president was ecstatic. His plans overcome relentless GOP opposition and a disastrous website rollout, and in his view, has come through with flying colors. The bottom line is this. Under this law, the share of Americans with insurance is up, and the growth of health care costs is down. Still major questions remain unanswered. How many have actually paid for coverage, and how many didn't have coverage before? And perhaps most important, did enough of the young and healthy sign up to fend off hefty premium increases in the years ahead? Mark Smith at the White House. The head of GM is in the hot seat again today on Capitol Hill over those defective ignition switches. Correspondent Jerry Bodlander has the details. GM documents show fixing the defective ignition switch would have cost only 57 cents, but that proposed solutions didn't represent, quote, an acceptable business case. GM CEO Mary Barra told a House panel that's no longer the way the company does business. I think we in the past had more of a cost culture and we are going to a customer culture that focuses on safety and quality. Barra apologized to the families of those killed in accidents related to the defective switch and said the company is working hard to find out why it took so long to recall the vehicles involved. Jerry Bodlander, Capitol Hill. U.S. military has hit a milestone in Afghanistan last month, one not seen in a very long time. National Security Correspondent Sagar Magani reports from the Pentagon. The Pentagon says March was the first month with no American military deaths in Afghanistan in more than seven years since January 2007. There are far fewer U.S. troops there now than in recent years, and the casualty numbers have been dropping as the force has gotten smaller. American troops have also shifted away from combat and are now focused on training and advising Afghan forces, with the international combat mission set to end in December. Sagar Megani at the Pentagon. A big debate over where accused terrorists should be tried is settled by the nation's attorney general. Correspondent Warren Levinson has the story. Attorney General Eric Holder says the prosecution of Suleiman Abu Ghaith proves terror suspects can be tried in civilian courts. And it would be good for our justice system and for our nation if last week's verdict can finally help to put to rest this long debate that we have had. Holder paid a visit to U.S. Attorney Preet Bharara to congratulate him on winning a conviction of Osama bin Laden's son-in-law. Abu Ghaith, who was seen delivering fiery sermons after 9-11, was the highest profile al-Qaeda figure to face trial since the attacks. But Holder said Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the architect of 9-11, will not be brought to civilian court. Warren Levinson, New York. The mayor of the District of Columbia has lost his party's primary election to Washington, D.C. City Council member and Democratic mayoral primary winner Muriel Bowser. Correspondent Martin DeCarroll reports on the upset win. Democratic incumbent Vincent Gray was unable to escape the shadow cast by a federal investigation into his.